Okay, folks, uh, welcome to Paranormal Roundtable, Friday night edition, doing it from the house, I have been lately, um, just haven't felt like going up to the studio, <laughs> that's not true, there's, there's reasons why I gotta be here, but uh, I got a lot going on, tomorrow night we'll be at the studio though, along with Sunday, and so, uh, oh, 
the show we we had a show planned for tonight. I thought that I was going to have somebody come on tonight, and it looks like it was supposed to be last Friday. And I thought that he understood it was going to it was going to happen this Friday, but I guess that's not going to happen. So no problem. I mean, I can wing it, dude. Believe me, I got plenty of materials. I've been looking through some stuff to see what we could talk about. And while I'm doing that, let me bring on my co-host, Monica. Hey. <laughs> How you doing? I'm good. How are you? Yeah, long time no see. I haven't seen you in a couple of weeks. It's been a minute, right? Yeah, it's been a minute. I'm having a hard time. I was trying to invite two other people to join us. And for some reason, my computer doesn't want to let that happen. Oh. Um, this is not a very powerful computer. This was not meant to be an everyday use for, like, I have a very powerful computer we use at the studio. This is not it. Uh, <clears throat> so it's not wanting to cooperate for whatever reason, and I can't send the invite. Um, I just keep saying that it's not available, and I don't know why it's doing this to me. Nope. And it may be something with Facebook, too. It's something about, it's giving me some weird message. Is it going through Messenger? Yeah, and it's not, but it's not letting me, it's not letting me do it. I'm like, it's not, it won't cooperate. Huh. Well, okay, so. <laughs> Give it a minute and try again, I guess. Yeah, I guess so. Uh Two hundred people in the chat, and there's Anthony. Yeah, I, I know how to do it. I'm not. That's that's the easy part. It's not letting me. It's some sort of weird. You want to look? Hold on one second, folks. Just give me one second, and I'm going to show Anthony what we're dealing with. I'm trying to read the chat, you guys. I don't have my glasses on, and I just, it's kind of blurry, so I'm sorry if I'm missing you. It's the Monica show right now, apparently. Right. There he is. Sorry about that. It's just, it's obviously not going to work. I mean, it's just not going to work. It's not going to let me, for whatever reason, it let me send it to you and to two other people that I yeah. thought maybe might want to join. But um, after that, that was it. It wouldn't. Is it anybody I can like copy my link to and send yeah, it? Yeah, uh, you could send it to uh, to Abe and to, uh, to Joe. Joe. Yeah, because I, I can't, I can't get them in here. I sent I one to Shane too, in case he wanted to join. I don't know if he wanted to join, but uh, to who? We had to go to Costco and do some shopping, which is always pleasant. Yeah. Standing online for thirty minutes, and I'm looking at the clock run, and I'm like, man, oh man. But I got a story from the cashier. Uh, oh, cool. Jamie, she gave me a haunted house story, something that was kind of reminiscent of what happened in my place. I was thinking that's that's interesting. Hopefully, she'll get in touch with me and give me some more information. Mm -hmm. My voice is hoarse. Been talking too much today. Um, last night, man, I had some stuff go on. I had to. Uh, I'm not gonna lie. I was at a, I was on a on a post last night, and I had to scream and yell. Mm. 
got into a shouting match with someone. Uh, we have to do these sweep and clear things. And Tony messaged me and Anthony and said that there was a guy that was there. didn't want to leave. The police take forever to show up. So I had to go. And then the guy wanted to scream and yell at me. <laughs> he tried to convince me that his dog needed a place to sleep. Well, I'm his like, dog? I love animals. I'll take the dog, but you got to leave. <laughs> okay. Yeah. <laughs> Let's see. I sent that to A, but I let me see if I can find Joe. On Facebook, he's Joe Breezy. Gotcha. I don't know what he's doing tonight. I didn't even ask him in if he's if he wants to jump on. He can, and if nobody wants to join, they don't have to. I can always hit up uh, these cases ourselves. Garitano. <laughs> it's a little. Well, he can send one to Chris. He might. You never know what he's doing. He might jump on. <laughs> <laughs> he's always good to talk to. Yeah, he sure. messaged me earlier. What's the stuff happening today? Apparently, uh, Graham Hancock, good guy. I was watching his little debate he had earlier. Um, it's like four hours long. I'm sorry, folks. I haven't eaten anything all day, so I'm trying to. Mm. All right. Things have been so hectic here. We have so much work. I don't have enough people. We're shorthanded. Well, that's a good problem to have. That's a good problem to have, but you got to be able to have the, the guards, the staff. You can't just you know, put cats in the <laughs> over there. I mean, it, it's good and it's not good. Like, you don't want to disappoint your client, right? But No, I know. I, I had to work busy. last night, which sucked, man. <laughs> I had to leave to go help and help Tony. Tony's not a big guy, and that guy was a pretty big guy. Then he wasn't big, but he was big for Tony. This guy was just being loud and belligerent and screaming. Like, I guess that works on some people. Like, the loud yelling and stuff makes people go, "Oh no, this guy's crazy." For me, it's just like whatever, dude. Just blood in the water. Just make me aggravated. What we got in the chat, folks? We got 250 people in the chat. Who do we got here? We got Jason Broussard. Different people than we've had the last couple shows. Why? Because my show has been in the morning. I've been just kind of like, hey, it's 2 a.m. Let's see who wants to be aggravated. And then the other show, uh, <laughs> two shows were like date, like morning time. Well, I saw that. Um, but, um, okay, so here's something funny to start. Well, we get the chat waiting for it to fill up and get about 300 people in here. It'll eventually happen. Um, I had, had some funny emails. Like, okay, so here's what I'm going to tell you. One of them, I just couldn't believe this. This is funny. And this is, don't take this the wrong way, sir. I know a hey, Bill Lair, he says, please put the damn green ball in a drawer or give it to one of the dogs. Pound it <laughs> on the desk and bouncing it causes thumping noises in the mic. Let's see. Does it do that? It's a, oh, he it's said a the green guy. ball. Let me get the green one. Does that make a thumping noise in the, in the mic? I don't know. Um, he said it's very annoying to the point where I have to turn the damn show off. Huh. Hmm. Sorry, Bill. Well, uh, I need it for stress. I will try yeah. my best to not, you know, bounce the ball and, and drive you up the wall. <laughs> um, so there's that one. Oh, and then I had another one. This one's. This is classic here. Mm, is this the one? Uh, pick a schedule and stick to it. <laughs> Who do you think you are? Get this. <laughs> this one's from another another person named Jake. It doesn't give me any. Well, is it Jake or Jack? It's just J A C. Hmm. Jack, Jake, I don't know, Walk. however you want to say it. Well, Jake, Jack, whatever your name is, he says that I need to um, pick a schedule and stick to it. That I, by going uh, live at 2 a.m., he says you were trying, totally trying to flex on the community. So I was like yeah. flexing on the community. I don't know what that means. Was I? Was that a flex? He goes, 
basically goes on to say that I was uh, trying to show people that I could get three, 400 people in a chat at 2 a.m. Uh, not- yeah. <laughs> I feel like I, mm, that, that's a stretch. I was just looking for a reason to come. I was up. like, okay, they want to <laughs> complain. They want to complain. They want to complain. And then another one said, uh, put on there something about people coming after you, drama, blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, people coming after me, the obvious words are, them coming after me. We're not going after them. Mm-hmm. We're not messing with them. That's the point. So how is that my my fault? I mean, I'm not attacking those people. Those people are making posts every day, flipping out and, and angry about me. And they what what it is too, I think a lot of it is they want me to mention them. There was somebody sent me a clip of this one YouTuber and he was all like, he had somebody on his show and he was trying to tell that person that I was talking about him. I just saw the littlest clip of it, you know, and it said, he said something about, he's talking about me. You know, like, and the person that's with him is like, what? Like, they're kind of lost. Okay. And, uh, this, I was yeah. talking about somebody else. And he goes, no, that was me. Like, he's all proud of it. And it was some, you know, like kind of a derogatory term or something. And I'm, I don't remember, but I saw that clip and I just started laughing. I was like, who would want that? Why would you want to be that person? Like, yeah. Just so somebody could mention you. <laughs> so. Right. Like, oh. is this, like, is it a game? Like, it is it like Josh mentioned me? I get a point, you know, yeah. said something like that. Yeah. It's like Scorpion said on the show one time, like when we were downtown, you know, back in the day, people would say, yeah, I fought him. They didn't say they beat me, but it was like a badge of honor that they were still alive or something. I don't <laughs> It was some kind of weird thing. You know, they'd be like, yeah, we fought like, but it, they never really go into detail about how the fight went. They, they don't say, hey, you know, he, he knocked my eye out of my head. No, they just say that we fought. Like, like there was actually a fight that took place, and maybe they got some licks on me or something, which happened a few times. But most of the time, it was like a, a lion just tearing apart a gazelle. And yeah. I was like, dude, this is not a fight. This is not, you know. <laughs> because they were mostly weren't, they weren't like fighters. They were just drunk people that would go down there and get a bunch of liquid courage and then act a sure. fool. And most of the time, they started it. I mean, like, well. They always did. I had to throw them out. It wasn't mm-hmm. like I enjoyed punching people mm-hmm. or hitting people or whatever the, the case may be. But that was. Well, I mean, if they're drunk enough, take a swing. Gravity will do the rest most of the time. <laughs> and fortunately, you know, they, they said, well, you're sober. And they were drunk. No, not really. I was drunk a lot back then, too. I uh, I should have been sober. But a lot of times I was drinking and by 2 a.m. I'd had a few shots and was kind of loose. You had to be to be in that freaking place. Um, so, so, like, <laughs> so what's been going on with you? Work, work, work. That's all I do. Work, work, work. Yeah, I wish I had some really cool like story to share from this past week, but it's all it's a blur of work. It's just, <laughs> that's all it is. You're like, I wish I had something cool. To Would talk you about. like me to? I'm a project manager. Would you like me to talk about like all the complaining I hear? <laughs> <laughs> That's what happens. The other day, one of one of the we have these two, well, three different construction companies we work with, and one of them I feel bad for her. She called me, and she started just blah 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 blah. blah. This was a, a Tuesday, and uh, this is kind of funny. And she was just she, she gave me an earful, chewing me out, and I was like, huh? I was like, what? And so finally, I was like, excuse me. I was like, I, I'm I'm the security, right? Said, oh, is this Wolf? And I said yes. She goes, oh my gosh, I was trying to call Will. And so this guy, William, he's one of the project managers, and she was giving him the thought. I hung up with her. I said, oh, it's okay. And I, I told Anthony, I said, he's about to get his ass chewed. And she's like, no, I'm even madder. I'm like, I'm like, oh, <laughs> thank God I'm not him. No kidding. I'm like, over there screwed some stuff up because she was hot, boy. She was ready to tear some people up. And uh, it's funny because we have two uh, companies that, that the – Project managers, not the project manager, like the superintendents or whatever, mm-hmm. but the, the, the ones that are regional project managers, they're women. Yeah. But you wouldn't have even seen that like 10, 20 years ago. And now you're starting to see like some of these uh, people that are in charge of these big projects. And there there is a gender bias there. I'm going to say that. I'm not no bleeding heart liberal guy. It's like, oh, man, you know, women can do what men can do, not whatever. All I'm saying is there is a gender bias there because men don't like to take orders from women a lot of oh. times. I see that, and then, so they pop off back. And the oh, yeah. guy that she was talking about, I already know how he is. I've already dealt with him, and he's like that with guys. I can only imagine what he's like with girls. And 
him and my brother got into it one time. So I actually messaged my brother and I was like, hey, he's about to get his ass chewed. <laughs> she was hot yeah. boy. So I think she called me on accident and she just she didn't even let me talk. She was like talking about, you know, all this stuff. And she goes in the and the pipe fitters came and blah, blah, blah. And I'm thinking, what does this have to do with the security? And so I was like, I, was like, I, was like, yeah. I think you think you're needing to talk to someone else. This is not I'm not the person you're. And she goes, oh, I'm so sorry. Is this wolf? I said, yes. She goes, I just realized she goes, I just saw red. So I guess it was some kind of like inspection or something. And he blew it which is always not good. Um, and no. so in the city of Austin, when they do an inspection, it could be two or three weeks before they get their ass back out there because they don't care. Oh. Yeah, so which means that they're just paying us more money for something that, can, you know, so it just drags on and on. Oh, sure. Well, nobody wants a project to drag. Mm -hmm. like, I don't that want one is dragging for sure. I got two of them dragging on right now, Monica. Yeah. I mean, you're not hurting me. But, you know, overall, it is hurting, you know, their companies because they're just dragging on and on and they're in bad areas. Uh, both companies, they they are in bad places. I'm oh, sure. Um, so, yeah, that's what they're doing. In I mean, a lot of the time, though, from my perspective, like if I'm behind on my schedule, it's a lot of the times like owner architect related. Like you didn't give me the specs I needed. You didn't give me like I've got RFIs coming out of my ears. You need to answer those for us to move forward. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and you know there's a lot of i mean the company that i work for is woman owned and there are two other project directors that are women besides myself oh wow so you have quite a bit um mm -hmm. for us it's just two regionals that that are women and it's kind of uh i have a good relationship with both of them i have actually um, but it has with both of them at one point in time or another. But um, it wasn't really their fault or mine. It was actually the apartment complex people, their deal, because they weren't locking things up like they were supposed to. We weren't told to be policing that. Yeah. Yeah. And so then after something went missing, they were like, hey, why didn't you do this? And I'm like, because uh, it wasn't our job. Why didn't you tell them? Um, so, you know, but, the, the, you know, I, I think they give these uh, these real estate companies a lot of leeway because if it was me and my company, I would have been like, no, I'm not paying for security. You're going to pay for security. And then that's the way it's going to be. But they've been very accommodating and that's either way we get paid. doesn't matter. Speaking of the project managers, all this uh, construction stuff, I thought it would be interesting since you were on tonight and that's what you do. Mm -hmm. We have one of our builds uh, that's been finished now for a while. One of L guards reached out to me earlier this week um, and he actually told me a really spooky story from one of our sites that we no longer have. Now, I knew that there were some weird things that had happened at that site, but this one was really weird. So I thought, why not bring this one up with you on the show? Sure. I thought it would be interesting. So we're going to start off with this one, and then we're going to go from there. Um, this one was at a place called, uh, well, it's it's in Manchaka. It's, it's right in the town of Manchaka, right outside of Austin. And one of my guards, who's kind of my friend, we, we've known each other for years. I say kind of, we've been friends for years, but we haven't talked much at all recently. And um, for years and years, he was a sales guy. Was a, he, he contacted me and he said, hey, you know, I had a really weird encounter there. And I, he did tell me about this, but I had just forgotten about it. And he said, you were going to talk about it on the show. And you never did. He goes, I've been binge watching your live stream. So might be something to talk about. And I said, OK. okay. So, <clears throat> so shout out to Mike. He he reached out to me, and this is what happened. He said, <laughs> he tells me now, he hadn't worked for me in about a year, two years, whatever. He tells me now, he goes, but I was inside one of the apartments late at night. He goes, and I was asleep. And I was okay. like, now he tells me because the job's been done forever. <laughs> and so he says, I was asleep. He goes, I know I wasn't supposed to be. He's like, but it was really cold, and it was during the freeze. And he goes, and, and I couldn't keep running my truck. Because we were running out of petrol. Well, he calls it petrol, but it's gas. You know, he's running out of yeah. gas. He couldn't get out to go get more gas. Now, that was a problem because it was two freezes back to back, two years. And, and so um, I think it was the last one we had, year before last. And so he was telling me that he was in the, in the building because one of the apartments still managed to have electricity. And thank God for that. But he said that he was running the heater and he was in there and he was – he had no blanket or anything. He was just in a lawn chair. But he was like, he had his pullover and he had been there for two days. Oh. Our guards had gotten iced or snowed iced in. Right. And it was 
thick ice, like this thick. You couldn't get out. There was nowhere to go. Um, it was like below zero. Yeah. Literally. And this is Texas. This is in Texas. Yeah. You know, it was below oh, yeah. zero. And you probably remember, yeah. And uh, I remember that show I did. It was like, I think uh, Ken came on for a little bit, and then Lyle came on, and then David Weatherly came on, and I just was checking in with them because they're all from Texas. And and maybe I think Nick Redfern was on there, and we, we were talking about everybody and what they were doing during the freeze. Sure. And Lyle, uh, the, being a good guy, he was out trying to pull people out of ditches and stuff because he had a four-wheel drive. Uh, mm -hmm. so, I can so see Lyle doing that. Yeah, so Lyle was out there trying to help people, and in between that, he, he talked to me on the show. So while that was going on, my guards were were, were hunkered down trying to uh, – of course, they got paid very well. <clears throat> and we gave them bonuses for it, too. And the company that, uh, that we worked for, the, the two different construction sites, uh, construction companies, they were nice and gave us a little extra. I have a good relationship with them. Thank goodness. So what ended up happening, um, this, he says, dude, I get a knock at the door. Now, this is a weird story, and, and I just totally forgot about it. So – I went back into the shadow people encounters and I found it. It was way down in there um, from two years ago. And he said, he goes, there was a knock at the door. And he goes, and I'm thinking, who is going to be knocking at the door? It was three in the afternoon. He goes, and it was in the middle of the week. And it was just the freeze was in the middle of the freeze. It was like on a Wednesday. And he said that he got out of uh, his chair. He's like, what in the hell? And he, he like, so he put his hoodie on, his pullover over whatever, you know, so he could, you know, put his gloves because it was so yeah. cold. Because when you opened the door, the heat, the cold would just come in instantly, and the wind was blowing. Oh right! So it was it was really bad. And that that spot right there where he was, that was like a wind tunnel. I hated working there. You can never wind it down because then if the wind blows, the devil like blows sand all in your face, and you're like oh, you're trying to like watch Seinfeld reruns or whatever. <laughs> and it's just like forget it, man. You know. And then it gets all over your my wife's iPad and whatever. And so, and, and really, and one night I got really aggravated. I was so tired. I had gotten some coffee and uh, I literally was taking the lid off. I'm not joking. It was like the devil did this to me. Oh. I took the lid off and I was, I was like, man, this coffee is so strong. So I was going to dilute it with water because I can't hit that cat too much caffeine. That And, and, the, and the wind blew and it, like dust and debris flew. Oh, and, like got me in my face and right in my coffee. And I'm like, ah, uh, and I look and there's like sand floating on the top of it. Oh. And I was so mad. I was like, okay, thanks a lot, devil. All right. You know, I was yeah. literally, <laughs> devil just did this to me, you know? So I threw the coffee out and I was like, this is great. So I had to leave to go get another cup. And the guy down there was actually pretty nice. He was a Sikh. And I know a lot about their cultures. So we started yeah. talking and he just like says, you know what, just take it. He just gave me a coffee and a donut. And I was like, wow. Yeah, uh, the Sikhs nice are guy. very interesting. Yeah. yeah, he was a nice guy. And um, they are very community oriented people. Mm -hmm very community oriented people. And and so anyway, we started kind of talking a little bit and I told him what happened and he just said, hey, take it, don't worry about it, man. And he was a younger dude, his, his dad owned it. And so I go back over there and I knew not to park like that. I turned my my, my SUV to, to not be, you know. <laughs> <the wind fire>. <laughs> but I, yeah, I had some weird stuff happen at that place, man. Like I saw, me and my wife saw this weird, like we thought it was a dog, like run across the, the parking lot. And it, then, it, then it was like, but it was like a shadow and then just kind of disappeared in the hallway. We were like, we drove up real quick and we looked and we didn't see anything. And we were like, what was that? So that, that was, there wasn't a whole lot of weird stuff happened. My wife worked at one night when I had to work at another site, mm -hmm. um, my brother was, was falling out. He was on his, on his last leg. And so I went to go cover and she stayed there for about eight hours. And she said she heard weird noises and like whispering and stuff. That's yeah. what all the guards reported Scorpio when he was there during the first freeze. Mm -hmm. that he heard weird noises and like he heard people talking in the hallway. So he went and he checked every one of those apartments. They were nowhere right. near finished. And uh, he said there was nothing like there was nothing going on. Like there was no one in those apartments, but he could hear it. And when the wind blew, he, this is creepy. He thought he heard the, the wind say his name. Oh, <laughs> it, didn't say it was his real name, Gary. And he thought it said Gary. And he was like, what? And like, so he called me and my brother. We were on a three-way call. And my brother, while this was going on, he was working in Maynard. And at that site, mm -hmm. he had some weird stuff happen. And I'll get to that in a minute because I went over that with him before this show. I said, hey, I'm going to talk about this weird stuff at these sites. Um, so anyway, what happened to Mike? Mike gets a knock on the door. And he goes to answer the door. 
And he's like, there's nobody there. And he's like, he's like looking and he's like, I'm half frozen, you know? And he was like, I had this balaclava on in my face, you know? And he goes, yeah. I look like a terrorist, you know? And so he's like, I'm like looking around and I'm like, what in the hell? Who's going to be out knocking on a door at 3 p.m. in the middle of a snow ice storm, you know? And it kept, you know, if you remember, it kept snowing and icing and then it would stop and then snowing, icing, and it kept getting higher. It was layered up, yeah. It was layered up. It was horrible. So he said, dude, it was in a lull or whatever. He goes, and I'm thinking the shining, you know, over here, you know, he goes. And so then I hear like footfall going down the hallway. And he goes, and I look and I thought I saw a person go around the corner of the back of the front. It's broad daylight, too. And he goes, and I'm thinking, what was that? So he goes, so I go walking down the hallway. He goes, but it looked like somebody all in black. And mm -hmm. then he goes, but it wasn't a normal person. It wasn't a person. Yeah. He's like, around the corner and there's nobody there and i look and there's there's the snow right there and the ice you would have seen like football or yeah. like footprints or something tracks um didn't see that at all so he goes you know what i just decided to go back in and and, and go to sleep i was it was the middle of the day and i didn't care i mean i told the guards i said you're there for days do what you got to do man the, the, the people running the place too they knew the circumstances were unusual the generators were going out Oh, um, Tony, Tony got it got real bad for Tony. Tony was at a place off, off of Ben White here in Austin. And what happened to him was real scary because he was almost out of gas and the generators were running out of gas. And so he had no way to heat himself. And so he could not get out to go get gas. And so he was going to have to try to walk uh, on, on the sidewalk next to the highway, oh, with no. gas, try to get gas to come back. And so it, it got down to the nitty gritty that and it was like by, by Thursday, I think it was like, it was so bad that we finally were able to drive out, you know, to, to relieve some of these people or the following Thursday, whatever it was. Um, but it was, it was really bad. And Tony came, it came real close. Like finally the, the sun came out and it stopped and Tony was able to leave. Oh, thank goodness. They, yeah. They didn't have vehicles. We were able to get them the petrol that they needed and, and whatever, to get those generators jump started, um, uh, the diesel. But it, it was it was it was very very rough, man. And then Zane, he was working at, at uh, Top Golf, which was close to our house. He he could walk a couple streets down and go. And he fell at one point, and he he slid all the way down. <laughs> and he goes, dude, I ended up sliding across into the parking lot. Oh my gosh, that must have and been there terrifying. Was nobody there, you know, but they needed a guard and then the netting for the, the top golf, you know, they have those big tall nets. Yeah. It was full of ice and so it collapsed. And he said he was there, you know, in the evening and he just hears and he goes outside the back and he says that the, the, the netting had just collapsed from the weight of the ice. Sure. So there was all this insanity going on. And I was getting call after call after call, and the, the patrols were stalled. We couldn't get vehicles in to go and help people. One lady had some homeless guy break into her apartment. The police were called. They didn't show up for like two hours, and he literally just was rummaging through her stuff while she pretended to be asleep. Oh, my gosh. So finally, we got it. Yeah, we had a guard that was about two, uh, building, two apartments complexes over. He couldn't drive over there, but he walked up the hill and managed to get there through the ice and go in and eject this individual. And they ended up in a fist fight. Um, so this was a crazy thing. Finally, then the police come after he's done pummeling this dude. And then they try to like, like they're going to arrest him. And the lady <laughs> sitting there telling him that the college girl, she's sitting there telling him, no, he did his job. He came up here and he helped me. And uh, so, yeah, there was all this crazy stuff going on. And, and it was just, it was bad. It was bad. So Mike, Mike, he, he answers the door and nobody, nobody's there. He does see somebody at the end of the hallway, like he hears footsteps. And so what ends up happening? Um, he goes back into the apartment. He says, and I, and I sit there and I'm just chilling, you know, for another like 20, 30 minutes. He goes, I'm finally starting to go back to sleep. He goes, and there, there's electricity, so he was able to keep his phone plugged in. And he was able to entertain himself. He's like, and I'm sitting there watching YouTube. And um, he said, you know, I started to fall back to sleep, and then I hear. Again, very loud and forceful. Mm -hmm. And he sits up. The dogs heard that. So he sits up and he's like, what in the hell now? And so then he thought, somebody's messing with me. So he runs over there and he looks out the peephole. Yeah. Again, you know, there's nobody there. So he decides to go. And the way they had that, there was this um, like patio. 
So he jumped over the, the, the patio thing and, you know, like the, the little fence. He's mm -hmm. like, and I'll bust my ass. He's like, and I got, I try to sneak around and look down the hallway to see if I could catch this person that's knocking on the door. He goes, and there's not a person there at all. He goes, but what was there really gives me the chills when we talk about it. And I've heard this before, and this is a weird story, but it still gives me the chills to even repeat it. He says, there was this being like a black shadowy looking person about six foot tall and thin mm -hmm. except that it was like it was like kind of like if you see like the fuzz on a tv you know like in the old yeah. days not the kind that we grew up with monica not like these static. Kids, they have the black mirror tvs whatever and so he said that it was kind of like it was vibrating and he was like and then he goes hey and he goes just instinctively i thought maybe somebody was wearing some sort of weird clothing and my eyes weren't adjusting or maybe it was the cold he goes i don't know half asleep and he goes, this thing turns and it just takes off running down the hallway. And he goes, it looked like a two-dimensional Atari figure, like running down the hallway. And so he stops and he's sitting there and he's thinking, man, should I do something? They're like, you know, yeah. I mean, nothing's going to happen. Nothing. You can't do anything to it. I mean, if it's, you know. And so he just said, dude. So he goes, I jumped back into the, in, into the uh, patio and I went back inside. He goes, and then he goes, that night. He goes, I was scared to death. And he said, all night long, every little noise from the wind, the ice would fall. You know, he goes, I'm jumping, you know, I'm jumping or whatever. And so the next day I called him up and I was checking on everybody. And we literally had 17 guards that were stranded on different various sites. Um, some of them that could leave and come back. And we were like, are you going to be able to be back? Are you going to be able to, are you going to be stuck at home? And the patrol was was my partner's situation, and he had half a dozen patrol guards who couldn't do their patrols. Um, and so the clients were complaining too. They were like, "Well, you need to be doing like like. Do you not see what it looks like outside? No kidding. They don't have snow tires here in Texas. When it snows here in Texas, folks, you people up north are probably going like, ah, whatever, you know. But here in Texas, they don't do anything about it. They just look at it. Yeah, it's like they're like they're like a baby, like a toddler, like. Probably three snow plows in the entire state. <laughs> <laughs> a friend of mine told me that he, he's from uh, Wisconsin. He says, man, he was he going out of Texas and it's snowing and everybody's just sitting around looking at it going, oh, ain't that pretty. <laughs> it's just like, you know, they, they have it like all the time, you know, but oh, over yeah. here we're just like, wow, look, it's snowing. And nobody does anything about it. They're just like, well, good luck with that. Hope you don't starve. Uh, that's pretty much pretty much that's kind of it in a nutshell right and so he says he's like every little noise so i called him the next day and i said hey are you okay you alive you, you doing okay he's like i got food I'm, I'm running low he goes but the the sun's starting to come out and so that was like day four or five it was starting to to, to happen cats are fighting over a box why do they love boxes so much i don't that's understand like i know you can With spend the all the money now, on the they're, cat they're and trees, and they will ignore the cat tree and play with the box. <laughs> My Why is that? Like, what I have no idea. But if you want to trap a cat, just put a box out. You... <laughs> Dude, it's so funny because the box was laid up like this, and I just see it go poof. And then I see Panzer over the top of, of another box getting ready to jump in it, and then Martis jumps in it. <laughs> now Beans is pushing him. Oh, my gosh. This is crazy. Man. If you guys are listening, you guys should take video of this. Oh, something funny just happened. Martis just smacked <laughs> He just smacked her. Oh, God, I wish we could have had that on video. Well, anyways, uh, back to the story. Sorry. Uh, it's fun having animals. Very entertaining. But no, so what happened? I, I told him, I said, hey, so how's everything been going? Because he had been seeing this weird kind of shadowy looking um painted looking thing. It was a small thing like what me and my wife saw, you know? Right. And I said, any more of that? And he would make this weird whimpering noise. And he says, you know, I haven't seen it or heard it since with the snowstorm, whatever. He's like, but something happened to me. Weird. So he told me that story. And then he said, hey, I'll uh, I'll type it out to you and I'll send it to your, I said, send it to my email so I can just move it over to the file and I'll have it. And then he messaged me the other day and said, hey man, you know, because I had said I wanted to do a show about these uh, shadow beings. In particular, like what they are, you know, on these job sites, I don't know. But it seems like in the early part of the build, Monica, mm -hmm. um, is when we really see them a lot. When you're starting to, um, like, break ground. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, I mean, no. disturbing the, the the soil, just like in a house, I imagine, right? You start remodeling, and that's when a lot of things start happening in houses. Like, you might have, like, a pretty steady baseline of haunting if you live in a haunted house. But then you go through and you start switching stuff around, and things get disturbed, you know, and you start having a lot more haunting episodes. So I imagine it could be something like that. I was going to ask you what was there before. Like, did you have to raise a building? Was there a demo? Was or was it raw land that was getting developed? No, no. Actually, there there was like a, a little ranch right there, and and there was a corral and a little. Uh, I remember I looked at it because normally we get called in um, whenever the building is further along. Mm -hmm. But uh, at this particular company that I work for right now, one of one of them, the cats are going crazy. Over there. One of them is the uh, is they they call us in pretty early because of the homeless problem that we've had. Yeah. And so we had, I think at one time, nine accounts going with them at one time. Mm -hmm. And these were huge projects, huge projects where you had 24 hours security Friday, Saturday, Sunday, and then you had 12 to 14 hours on the other days. And so we were pumping. We had a lot of people going, whatever. Um, and so we still do have, uh, we always have a lot of construction going on with the with security but but this company in particular, we had several accounts at, at any one time. And so whenever we would get a new one that would come online, I would go and check it out. And sometimes I would walk it with the superintendent and then their boss, which was the, the project region. And then there's a person above them, you know, which is now the, one of the women that, that I deal with. She She's actually pretty cool. She wasn't the one that called me today, but she she's pretty tough, too. Yeah. Um, I hate to be on her bad side. Uh, you know, but anyway, I would go and I would walk the ground. So when that one in particular, I remember that one when they had just started uh, and there was a guy named Andy that was that was the super on that one. I remember that. And he said that whenever they went to uh, level the mm -hmm. the one of the like stables or whatever, because there I guess it was like a horse stable there. Mm -hmm. They found like 40 or 50 rattlesnakes just came crawling out from underneath. Oh. And so, yeah. And so we were walking around and he's telling me this and I'm like, oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, the heads up. This was about a month ago, right? He goes, yeah, it was like a month ago, you know? And, and I'm like, okay. And I'm looking around. So I had to go right back to my truck and put on some, you know, some boots that would not let me get. And so luckily I had some at that time because I was always tromping around in these sites. And I said, it would have been nice to know that you ran into a rattlesnake nest. Um, before I started walking around out here in regular shoes, but oh, uh, that, that place do what? I'm sure he was like, oh, they're gone. <laughs> yeah, they're gone. Well, now they spread out everywhere. You know, yeah. Um, the workers and the guards, I think, all together killed about ten of them. All together, mm -hmm. one of my guards had literally said that the worker had found one in one of the porta johns, and it was curled up inside. And so, yeah, it was in the spring when that started. And then there was the summer when, when they got real bad and they were everywhere. Now, one of the things people don't realize is when you're doing this, with, with the, a lot of these rattlesnakes, though, they'll come in with the uh, the, the, the grass. When they bring the um, the squares of the, yeah, the, the sod. sod. The sod, yeah. And these are baby rattlesnakes that'll be in that sod. That's and they'll hatch in there. Oh, yeah. And then they'll be running around all over the site. And baby rattlesnakes are actually worse than bigger ones. And I'll tell you why. They don't control their venom and they don't dry bite. When they bite, they bite. And that's yeah. it. And so you die. <laughs> but one of the guys that, that was in charge at that time um, was one of the project uh, regionals. Uh, his name was Snake Man. We call his nickname. He's in the Guinness Book of World Records for laying in a coffin full of snakes. And so he was my, yeah. <laughs> <Rattlesnake>. <laughs> All the things. <laughs> We had a show on Animal Planet called uh, Rattlesnake Republic. If you can go look it up, and this guy is a good friend of mine. And he still does project managing today, and we still work for him. He's working at a different company now. But we had three different secure, uh, construction companies we were working for, and he was at that particular company, and he said, dude, I find rattlesnakes on these all the time. And he told me years ago about the sod. I've been working with him since 2006, and like I said, to this day, we're still working together. Right. And so he was saying that uh, one day when one of the guards had come in or not guards that workers had come in and they were taking the sod off of that with the, what do you call it? The forklift mm -hmm. the bunch of them just fell out like three or four just started crawling everywhere. 
<laughs> yeah. So it was like, man, oh man, dude, you don't want to be like, you know, on these sites when it's tromping around on that fresh sod. That always freaks me out, dude. When I have to walk I through a yard or something. Never had a snake on my site. Like I, I, I yeah, apparently. <laughs> and every time I see the sod coming in now, because we don't really we get out of there usually before they start doing the landscaping because we don't it, we don't like to do the landscape. In bulk of what we do, it's not like these multi-million dollar high rises. I mean, what we do is mostly upscale restaurants in Dallas. So oh yeah, well there we you go. Find You're not just like have. a roach infestation from the previous tenant. <laughs> So you're lucky then. Well, not lucky in that way, but lucky that you're not having to deal with uh, the, uh, the 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 snakes because that is a big problem. And another thing, when the houses are getting built, I had to go into one of the houses one night and I was walking around. Get this. This is really creepy. OK. Um, and I heard crunch, crunch, crunch. And I'm like, oh, man, what am I stepping on? What am I walking on here? And I thought it was just crickets or whatever. And I turned the light on, and Anthony was with me, and I think Nellie was behind me. And all this crunching noise, and I turned the light on, because they had left uh, the lights on or whatever, and they were just all of them. The lights were all on. And so one of the supers just said, hey, man, can you have your guys turn those off and lock the doors? We had keys to all the, the houses or whatever. And, uh, and so and this was for another company that we worked for, a very large nationwide company. Mm -hmm. um, and so we, we were walking through the house and when I turned the light on, the floor was absolutely covered in spiders. Oh, God. And I kid you not. I do not like spiders. My and my body. wife was like, <laughs> I, think, I, think, I ought to be thinking of two different times. One time it happened with my wife and we were in Round Rock. Uh, and, and I remember we stepped on one and it's made this crunching, popping noise. And it was oh. the biggest spider <laughs> you'd ever seen. Um, so th this one, though, I think Anthony was with me. And the, the other, the guard that was working there. Uh, and so when we were walking through, it was just crunch, crunch, crunch. And I was like, it was just covered in spiders. And they, I think they were wolf spiders. No, oh, God. Um, but there was, it was cricket season. So they yeah. were out eating the crickets. So, but I didn't see crickets. I just saw spiders. And I said, oh, my God. They were jumping around everywhere. Mm -hmm. And so I said, I'm, I'm good. I'm good. And then mm -hmm. one time I, uh, I was walking and, and I felt something on my, my ankle, whatever, and I went to go knock it off. And I was talking to one of the, the, the site supervisors. And he goes, hey, man, you might want to watch it. And he goes, watch it, dude. And I looked down. And there was a scorpion, like, hanging off of my sock, trying to cling on. No. And before he could strike me, I, like, flung him off real quick. And then we didn't know where he went. And it went in the direction of his truck. Oh, and his no. door was open. He was like, where'd it go? <laughs> we were, like, looking for it. <laughs> I said, dude, I'm sorry, man. I just tried to get it off of there. And uh, John was like, dude, that, cab. My he's going to sting me, Wolf. He goes, I'm going to sue your ass. He's joking. But right. Uh, luckily, nothing happened. We don't know where it went. But it was, uh, there were scorpions no. all over those no. sites, man. No. Nope. Everywhere. No, nope. no. Nope. I would not go back to that site. <laughs> so, I mean, Had to, man. I mean, it's your everything. job. I mean, I can't just be like, no, I don't like scorpion snakes or spiders. And Oh, you know, I can. I'd go right to my office and be like find somebody else <laughs> i can handle any i mean snakes startle me and i don't like them necessarily but i'm not afraid of them spiders if i walked into my job site and noticed it was covered in spiders i'm not kidding when i say i'd probably pass smooth out and die from spider bites because i'd fall right into them. well monica i can tell you this if i would have been the guard on duty i probably would have done that yeah, but luckily the guard on duty was he's a he's a guy you used to work for us a real tough guy named Jaime, and he was just like ah oh, no problemo like he didn't care you know some people uh, don't like it doesn't bother him I am not one of those people I would mm -mm. That's, yeah not I mean, me hate I, to say, I would not want to be coming out then like yeah roaches rats mice snakes whatever they'll, they'll I'll, you know if they startle me i might scream but i'm not afraid of them i'm not like running away screaming from them spiders when, when they were building that one scorpions yeah. <laughs> yeah yeah when they were building that uh that site that i was telling you about the one where, where mike saw the weird shadow thing yeah that i got i got a picture one of my guards took of a big gnarly black widow in the corner of the uh, porta john and i and i see this the photo gets sent to me as this guard named kevin used to work for us and I look and I'm like, what am I looking at? And he goes, and he circles it, you know, and then he's like, take a look at the left corner. I was like, oh, and he goes, yeah, I just sat down to use the restroom and I have a, I have a visitor in here. And it was like, he was totally nonchalant about it. 
And I was like, that was a big, gnarly Black Widow. I was like, I would have been up. There would have been a mess. <laughs> been a lighter and a can of out of there, man. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> so what ended it. up happening with this guy with with this shadow thing? You know, he yeah. said, you know, as as the weeks went on, you know, he goes, I just kind of forgot. I didn't forget about it, but I kind of put it in the back of my mind. He goes, and then one night, one of the the painters were there. They were just working late, you know, and stuff. And you know, you have. When, when the electric electricity is true and they're trying to get it done, it seems like they work late and then the painters will come and they'll work late. Mm -hmm. And so they, they started uh, coming in and working later and later. And so then he said that they were kind of behind and he goes, and one of the painters told him, he said uh, very broken uh, English, but luckily Mike speaks Spanish. So when he was talking to the guy, the guy told him, he said, dude, that they're, they're a fantasma. And he was like telling them, you know, that means ghost in Spanish, that they saw a ghost in one of the apartments. And get this, it was the, the one that he was sleeping in. Oh, man. <laughs> so then get this, it gets even weirder. So Andy, before before they moved him to another site, Andy told us, like, we went, we went to take a look because Scorpion had started, Scorpion, that's his nickname, Scorpion, not the bug. But <laughs> we're talking about, he's probably in the chair right now, lurk, lurking is. around somewhere. <laughs> Um, but but he started sleeping in that particular uh, whatever at night, <clears throat> and we would have a guard that would come in and work the night shift on the weekend because he had he he would have had to take a bus or all the way back up north. So he just started staying there, and the guard would be out there in the in the vehicle, whatever. And so he was there one night, and he said that he felt like something. Yeah, there he is, right there, Scorpion. Remember, you told me this. He felt like something like grat like. Ran, like somebody, you know how it feels when somebody runs their hand on top of your head? Mm -hmm. Okay. So he was sitting there in that same apartment that Mike was in. And he said that he felt like somebody had like touched the top of his head. And he goes, I wake up and I look and he was like, there's nothing there. So then my brother worked it and he was there one weekend and the same thing happened to him, but it was broad daylight. And he was like, I was sitting there and I was looking at my iPad He's like, and I just came back from doing my rounds. And at that point, there was already people, a little bit of people living at the front of it. And the back was still being worked on. And he said that something, it felt like something touched the back of, like fingers going on the back of his head. And then he thought, oh, no, it's a spider. So he gets up, drops his iPad and looks, and there's nothing there. Right. But he sees like one of the doors, like the pantry door, like move. So it freaked him out. And so then we had another guard that went there who literally only worked two days. And so that was the apartment that they gave us to use the restroom and do whatever and, and you, you know, hang sure, out in. The haunted one. The haunted one, right? And so, <laughs> he, so he, he was like, he worked there for two days. He freaks out. He freaking quits in the middle of the night. So Anthony had to go down there and, and hot foot it down there and finish. He's like, I'm not working here. Blah, blah, blah. And the guy was this nerdy dude from like Lompoc or something. But he was like, I'm not working here. This is ridiculous. There's something out here. Something is out here, you know. And so he quits. And so we end up having to go out and uh, there's Joe right there. We'll put him on right here. What's up, Breezy? What's up, my man? What up? What's Joe? going on, brother? It's going, man. It's going. We're just hey, telling the stories. Hey. Everybody go Breezy. But let me right change on. it. Don't let me interrupt. Oh, no, no. We'll bring you in. I just got to finish this, this, this tale of woe here. So, <laughs> <laughs> so, so what ended up happening there was this um, guard that worked there. So Anthony, he gets there, and Anthony's like, "What? what is this? You know, he calls the guy, and the guy's like down, like already almost home or something. He lived at like Circle C or something. And he says, I'm already at home. I'm not going back up there. I saw a ghost. And Anthony kind of laughed because we already knew there was some stuff there, but nobody was reacting like, eh, eh, you know, like this dude. No. You know, so, so Anthony goes, you saw a ghost. You're going to leave post because you saw a ghost. He goes, okay. Fine, go, go be afraid, whatever. So then he goes, I go into the apartment where this guy was staying. And he goes, and the guy had just made an absolute mess. It was like a big mess. And he says, dude, then we have to clean it up. So the next day, the guard that came in in the morning, we were working the weekend or whatever. That guy was pretty cool, man. And uh, he said, my, and, and my nephew said, hey, you know, I'll give you like 20, 30 bucks, man. Just if you just clean the apartment up, because I, I worked all day. Then I had to come here and sit. I'm exhausted. I need to go home. And he was actually too tired. He actually went and just pulled in, in the, par uh, the, the parking lot, went to sleep. So then that guard, his name was, uh, I remember his name, uh, Keith or Kenneth or something like that. He worked part time. He calls me and he goes, dude, 
He's like, in this pantry, he's like, there is a satanic Bible. Because somebody that was there, had, and it was in Spanish. It was a Spanish satanic Bible. And he goes, and then there was a pentagram, and he showed me like a picture. It was like a pentagram, um, like necklace, you know, that was uh, stainless steel, whatever. And he goes, somebody, somebody around here is doing brujeria. You know, and he's like me, he was half Hispanic, whatever. That was a few years ago, man. But that was that was weird. And so then I, when I was talking to Mike last week, I said, Mike, I said, do you think maybe that maybe is why? He goes, he goes, dude, I never thought about that. But one of those workers that was there was probably storing their stuff. In the, and it wasn't the pantry, it was the closet, the, mm -hmm. the hallway closet. And he said, and they were putting their stuff in there. So there was something going on around that apartment that we didn't know. So that would really pretty much explain to me what that was, that black shadow man that was appearing sure. there was doing. I mean, if uh, it didn't like cause it, it at least amplified it. Yeah. yeah. Right. We, we also looked at the plans with Andy, the guy that was the original superintendent there. And I don't, I don't, I'm not going to sit here and pretend Anthony's an architect by trade. I'm not. And I'm looking at the blueprints and I'm like, mm hmm. <laughs> yeah, I'm pretending to know what I'm looking at. He goes, over oh, well, there is where the stable was. I said, stable, yeah. Mm -hmm. And then he's like, over there was the main house. I'm like, oh, yeah, rectangle house thing, yeah. He's like, you don't know what the hell you're looking at. I said, no, I don't. I am not an architect. Anthony did. And we were looking at it, and he was going to architecture school at that time, or he was going to college to be an architect, whatever. And I was like, I, I don't know what I'm looking at. What is this? And he, he started showing me. So I did start to learn – piece mm -hmm. by piece about blueprints because I looked at them so much, but I never had any reason to really learn them. And I said, well, what was there on that corner where that the particular apartment building was? Mm -hmm. And that particular corner, you can see he laid the old blueprints down, you know, next to the new blueprints. He said, this was what we got from the city. And it showed a building. That building would have been where the master bedroom was of that ranch house it would have it would have been like it would have like been half of that apartment would have been half of the master bedroom and he said look at this this is interesting and he had to show me because like i said i didn't know what the hell i was looking at and i said oh okay i see it and i was like that's crazy well we also found out that the person that lived there committed suicide oh there was a suicide that happened yeah and it, we found that out from the neighbors that they, they had a, a place that used to be a restaurant and the guy, same guy, had owned it for like 18 years. And it was a uh, 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 country western bar. They turned into whatever. So I go in there, right, and I just started talking to them. And um, I had a paranormal roundtable shirt on. And that the, the lady that worked there was like, she was really cool, and she she used to listen to the uh, not the live stream but the podcast. I don't know if she still does, but she was like, she's like, oh, what is that? And I told her about my show, and I gave her a business card. I said, yeah, and I have a we're, we're doing a build our next door. It's not mine, but we're doing the security for it. And so we started talking. She goes, oh yeah, she goes that property was is haunted. So she went on to tell me one night when she was getting out, she'd been working for twelve years. And she said we were getting out of there when it was a dilapidated building. That's all it was. And she said she saw a, like a bluish green ball of light just bouncing around, going into the ground and coming back up. And her and her boyfriend at the time, and he was a biker, you know, at that time it was a biker bar. And he was a big old tough guy. And she was like, he got so scared. She's like, he got on his bike and drove out and left me. Oh my <laughs> like, God. Say, she's like, we're not together anymore. And she was like, that was it for me. She's like, you're going to leave me here. And she goes, and I was there by myself. So I just went back into the bar and she's like, and then she goes, I hear this like thud hit the side of the wall facing that property. And uh, she's like, I got really scared. And I called my boyfriend and was like, where are you at? And he's like, he's like, I, I got freaked out. I'm coming back. You know, I'm coming back for you, baby. You know, and she's like, no, thank you. I'm good. Yeah, I'm good. <laughs> yeah. So she like called a whatever cab or whatever it was and got out of there. Her friend came and got her or whatever. But it was crazy when you when you think about that. Somebody had, you know, like put this satanic bible or whatever along with their pentagram and a few other little weird things like some feathers or something hmm. and they had it inside of like one of those uh like like small little bags you know like saddle bags and it was in it was in the cabinet or whatever in the hallway so you th and then you find out that this apartment was literally from the blueprints of it mm -hmm. you know was was there was a guy that killed himself 
So it was so weird. It was a freaky thing. And so, you know, I don't know, man. I mean, you put two and two together and there you go. I mean. Yeah. I mean, do you, I mean, do you think that like the land itself could attract that kind of thing? I think you know? so. I mean, you know, it was like, it was like the thing with the coffee. Like, and you know, and I made a little joke to myself. I don't, I'm not one of those people that talks to myself. I'm like, hey, how you doing? I'm not that guy. Okay. I know some people do talk to themselves and it's, you know, they feel like it's cathartic or whatever. Not me. I just don't, it's weird. So I just I really talked to myself, but I was like, I had spilled something the day before, you know, and I thought, oh, dang it. And I'd gotten a phone call, I dropped my phone. And I had one of those snap kitchen meals and I was getting ready to, to eat and I got up to get my phone and it spilled. And I said, damn it, this site's got the devil on it, you know? And so the next day when I, when I was about to open my coffee, I said, I hope the devil doesn't piss on me again. And so when I opened it up, the, the, the wind blew with, with debris and dust and went into my coffee and I'm like, wow. See, speak wow. of the devil and he shall appear. Exactly. And so yes. did I, did I make it happen? Or was it already because that place is a was already you know weird? But you know what's 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 funny, and you guys can tell me what you think of this. Nobody reported anything from any of the other parts of that site other than that weird little canine thing. Mm -hmm. Not, nothing else. There was nothing going on. But but that building there, and then the area behind it, people would hear horses. Like you know how they they do that that neighing, mm -hmm. that whinnying, whatever. People would hear horses, and there would be no horses there. The the, the people that live behind it, they still owned like four or five acres, and uh, they were a Hispanic family. My brother talked to them because they were back there one day, and they were riding their dirt bike. And uh, he said they didn't have horses. Nobody around that had horses. So the horses they were hearing must have been from the people that had that ranch. Uh, as best we could tell from the people next door and what we heard you know, from the stories, the guy's wife had died in an accident. And so for a couple of years, he had kind of lived on his own and he was a cantankerous old dude. His children didn't deal with him anymore. Mm -hmm. He was a shut in. And then eventually he just took his own life and it got so bad that the city or the County, I should say the County came and uh, reacquisitioned his animals. They took them from him because mm -hmm. he wasn't taking care of them. The place fell into disarray. And then he, that was it. But that's the story that we kind of figured out. We put it together. Um, and then some of these sites that had weird stuff happening were nothing but open, empty fields. Now, Joe, you know, you live close to me. Ben White, the one on Ben White had a lot of weird activity. And yeah. that area was nothing but an open, empty field full of Johnson was, grass. Yeah. And so I don't know what it was, but there was a body that was found at uh, near that site. Um years ago it was on the news or something and so it was a woman's uh, body and so somebody somebody had claimed that right there it's over there by riverside and ben white um kind of kind of when you know joe if you're going toward the like riverside right. you're going to the port and you take a right and go down ben white it like would be like right of, yeah 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 like but right yeah, yeah if you were coming yeah riverside ben white and then there's that's where like the waffle house and all that stuff is yeah yeah, yeah, you should just be open to hang out. Yeah. 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 <laughs> a Waffle House. Trust you know what's me. even weirder? We were, <laughs> yeah. we were, we were doing the uh, collar. I'm not going to say the name of it, but there was another one we were doing. And I, and I heard football around my truck. And it was weird. A guy had just given me a dog man story. And I just got the phone with him. And I was like, oh, this is a good one. And so I had messaged Vic. And that was back when me and Vic were, were whatever. And I, I messaged him. I said, man, I want to tell you, I got I got, I got it together now. I got some good stories, you know, whatever. So I, I, I was all feeling proud of myself, you know, for doing good work and, and hustling, you know, and getting stories, you know. And, and then I hear footfall. And I was like, and I heard something rustling in the wheat, in the reeds. And this would be near Bergstrom. Um, I'll just be honest. I'll tell you, it's, it's, it's called Colorado Cross. I'll just tell you, we haven't done that side in so long. It doesn't matter. We did have an incident there one where I had to, uh, the police had to come and arrest a guy, and he literally pointed a gun at me. Okay. And it was a, it was a drunk worker that was really cool up until the day he did that. So there was an altercation that happened there, but other than that, everything was cool. But I had this incident that happened to me, and I, I'll never forget it. I posted it on Facebook at the time. I think it was like 2016 or something. And I, I heard footfall going around my truck. And I kept, I was like, what in the hell is that? And I was like, 
and it sounded like a dog. So I thought that there was like a four-legged animal. It didn't sound like no heavy, loud, you know, it was, but it was a dog. And I even heard like how a dog kind of makes that, you know, noise. And I was like, did that, is that a dog just sneeze or something? You know, so <laughs> sitting there in my truck. So I get out of the truck and I look and I'm underneath it. And I'm like, I'm, you know, I'm like, what in the hell is going on here? And there was nothing. So a couple weeks later, I had a female guard that would work out there, and she calls me up, and she's just frantic. She's like, I just saw the, the weeds move by themselves. Something parted them. And she's like, and I smelled this weird, nasty, like, blood, urine, and wet dog smell. She's like, and then later on in the night, she goes, I heard this awful howling noise. And I was just like, I don't know what that is, and I hung up and went to sleep. I'm joking. <laughs> <laughs> like, yeah, it sucks to be you. Oh, see ya. Like, that was no, no, frightening. No, no. I was like, you better toughen up. No, it's crazy. So I told her, I was like, you better get you a gat. You know, get so you some strap up. <laughs> you better stay strapped, girl. So I told her, I said, look, no, I said, look, I said, I've had some weird stuff happen out there. I'll swing by there later on. And I did. I came by about four in the morning. And she was she was nervous, and she was like, "I don't like this place." And I said, "You know what? I don't blame you." She wanted that. I told her, "Don't don't want to work there because," and then get this: there was a genetic testing laboratory, oh. right there. You could see the the from from the subdivision. You could literally see the lettering on it. And I was like, and it was almost like you know the 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 lab from from the from the video game uh, Rampage. You know, you're just like, great. So they're making Ralph and. You know, what's his name? Uh, what's, what's the, you know, what is the, the wolf's name? Uh, yeah, Lizzie and, and George and over there making them, you know. And so I, I, t I told everybody that worked there, I said, yeah, there's a there's a genetic lab right there. It's really weird. I can't remember the name of it. But anyway, it's not there anymore. I mean, the, the building is. and the, 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 the sign's probably still there. But if you know what I'm talking about, Joe, it's like Burleson. If you take Burleson, yeah. you take like a left right there. And now, you know, that spot at one time was extremely haunted. People were seeing ghosts at that four-way stop because bunches of people had been killed at that four-way stop. And I don't know why that was, but it got so busy that they finally put a light up there. But for the longest time on that on that spot on Burleson, people were being killed. I mean, it was like they were they were running through the stop. I don't know why they would do that. But it just seemed like people were not paying attention. And so I was talking to a police. Oops. Oops. <laughs> I took yeah. myself out of the game there. <laughs> <laughs> Threw myself out the game. So, so I'm sitting there and talking to this cop. That would, would that was his beat. You know, he's a county guy. And he said, man, he goes, yo, so many people had died. And we were talking about it. And there were people that would report a little ghost child, like a little boy that would run out in front of their vehicles. And mm -hmm. uh, I heard that story a few times. Like, And then people would slam on the brakes and then – or they would go right through him and then nothing would happen. It was like it just – whatever. And it actually happened to a friend of Scorpio's. And so it was weird. Like he told me this story and this police officer says, yeah, one night and I was going through there. I was doing my job and I was talking to one of the city guys. That's the – the county's right there. And then you got the city people. He goes, we were all kind of shooting the breeze. He's like, and one of these uh, APD guys tells me, he's like that one night he had, when he was sitting there, there used to be on that four-way stop, there was just an open parking lot. And then there was like a shipping place right there with a huge building, like a bunch of trucks, whatever. And they had gotten some break-ins. So he decided to go and lay down on it and see maybe, you know, deter the crime, whatever. He's like, and he's typing up my report. And he tells this county guy, that he gets a knock on the window and he looks and dude, this story creeped me the hell out, dude. And I'm over there like on my job site, Colorado crossing by myself. And there was only two residents there at that time. And they were clear on the other side of the subdivision. So I could have screamed and they wouldn't have, you know, I could have been like, help, help. And they would have just been like, what was that? Um, <laughs> why would you be doing that? Right. Help. I'm 400 pounds, six foot four. Somebody's coming. <laughs> <laughs> I heard it's Skinwalker. Like, Use the force. <laughs> <laughs> so you know, so it, and that sounded goofy. Like, why would you be? Why would I be doing that? You know. But anyway, so so he says that he gets a knock on the on the window, and he thinks it's a person. He's like typing. He goes, and I look at peripheral, and I see somebody. And he goes, so I look. He's like, and there's this little boy standing there in his window of his of his cruiser. And he goes, and the boy, he goes, his eyes were hollowed out. 
And he goes, and his face looked all messed up on one side. And he was just like, like breathing on his window. And he said, dude, I could not look away. I was just staring at it. He goes, and I'm, and it was, I wanted to say the words like, can I help you? Or, you know, what's wrong? You know, he goes, and nothing came out. Like no words came out of my mouth. He was telling this County guy and he was just like, I just stared at him and he goes, and then he was just like, like he was just gone, like just vanished in the thin air. And uh, so, yeah. And, I, and then he's sitting there telling me, and then he's like, well, I'm going to go get a refill of some coffee. I'll see you. And I'm just like, okay, thank you. Cause I thank am you. here <laughs> at the site where people see, you know, stuff moving by themselves, like the reeds are, are moving. And then I'm hearing football that sounded like a dog or something. I don't know what it was. Um, so yeah, that was, that was that place. I hated working that site. I hated it so bad. And, but it was just a weird place with a lot of weird energy. And one night I went in there to use the restroom and I probably told this story before, but, uh, I thought I saw something walking through the backyard. And then ultimately one of my guards did see something and I told, talked about it on the show, but those sites, man, they, they, I can tell you stories for days off of these construction sites. Now, Monica, what you do, you do these uh, construction jobs mm -hmm. and you go to like restaurants and stuff like that. Well, we guarded an olive garden one time. Yeah. And, um, yeah, I had something weird happen to my guard there. He was, you know, and I'm going to say this, they, they have like the tomato paste. It's like in a can, you know, yeah. <laughs> the trade secrets, whatever. <laughs> but they have them all lined up there and uh my guard heard like bang 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 and we had had some weird stuff happen at that place and so he comes around the corner and this guy's name is jeff he used to work for us for years man and he was he's a big guy jeff's like six six and uh he's actually related to the family that i saw the dog man with he's that was he was he used to go out with the, my friend's sister and he was like dude i hear this bang 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 i think it was jeff that told me this and he, he said he looked, and all of the tomato cans had been knocked off of the shelf, like all of them, boom, 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 like the whole thing. So then he hears some more noise later on, like a freezer slamming or something. So he called Anthony and told him about it. I was on another site, you know, and so I, I was clear across town. I said, I can't come by there and check it out. He, he's like, well, I'm not asking for backup, but, I mean, it's just weird, right? I said, yeah. So then Scorpion goes there because – Scorpions like Mikey, you know, he'll eat anything, right? Well, <laughs> he'll work anywhere, and he'll fall asleep at every account. He don't care, bar none. He's he can sleep, whatever. If he goes past twelve hours, time go sleep, and he don't care if the ghost is yanking on him. That's what made the the Church of the Forgotten episode on These Woods Are Haunted with him and I so mm -hmm. terrifying to me. Was <laughs> he was like running away from the place? I'd never seen Scorpion even afraid. I've never seen the guy afraid, much less running away from something. And right. so the night I had to do that, you know, the, the site. But, uh, yeah, that was weird. But Yeah, I, he, I remember that story. Yeah, and it was yeah. we did it on the show, too. And so yeah. we, we were there at the, at the Olive Garden, and he had called me, and he said, dude, I keep hearing this, like, thumping, popping noise, whatever. And so I go into this Olive Garden, and I'm sitting there with him, and we're talking. And uh, they were cool. They had left us like some food, like a, like a plate or whatever. And so I got to know the manager and she was a really cool person. And she says, you know what? I'll leave you a plate. Come by there. And if the guards are and you can have whatever. And she, 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 I said, okay. So I told her, you know, and so, so we're sitting there, we're eating and we hear like an argument, like a full on, like, like two people are arguing or something. And I'm looking at him and I'm like, I'm waiting for him to get up and go check. And he just like, he's like, it's just ghosts. And he just keeps <laughs> He just keeps eating. And I'm like, what? The I said, go look. It sounds like people. And he goes, dude, it's ghosts, man. They're I mean, he goes, I've been hearing it all night. There's nothing here. And it didn't even bother him. It's like not even phasing this dude. And I'm like, dude, I can't sit here. And this I guess if they're not bothering you, like. Nah. I just didn't feel like eating fettuccine Alfredo with <laughs> Got ghosts or, yeah. eating or whatever or an <laughs> argument, you know, and. And so I go, I finally, I go back there and there's nothing there. There was nothing there. It was so weird. So everybody that worked at that particular one and not too long ago, <clears throat> I had somebody reach out to me and they were doing a remodel job at another Mex at a Mexican restaurant. And they were the same people that did the remodeling job at that one, at that particular Olive Garden. And they said, Hey, you want to come work another haunted place? <laughs> and so I said, sure. You know, so I ended up doing it, but nothing happened there. I ended up working it a couple of times. Um, 
nothing happened. Like I was, I was bored. I was like, I was like, wow, this place isn't haunted at all. He said it's haunted, but if it was, it wasn't doing much. I did. I thought I heard the toilet flush or something, but I mean, so terrifying. Yeah, <laughs> I've been toilet this crap. You know. <laughs> <laughs> so, so Joe, you you being from Austin, tell me you probably know about a lot of haunted places around here, around Austin, Central Texas. Yeah, you- actually, um, uh, tomorrow I'm bringing on a, a buddy of mine. Um, he actually goes, I guess, uh, uh, chocolates on the ground and goes to all these, uh, <laughs> goes to all these. Uh, Haunted spots, man. So he's done like the um that the of course the railroad tracks in San Antonio oh, yeah. and Martha Lights and so yeah, so we're gonna do a whole big thing on that. But yeah, I do know a, a little bit about it, like especially in Austin, like in North Austin where I grew up, um, everything was like every every kid on the house or in the neighborhood was haunted. So yeah, I did have a lot of experience with that. Then you got the, so like right back there, I don't know if you, and I know you know the spot, uh, Wolf, but uh, back there where Side Pocket is on North Lamar, back oh, yeah. behind there, there's there's a whole field out there that we, we used to, you know, because back in the 90s, 80s and 90s, you know, you just go kick it out there. And um, yeah, you stay out there past dark and you'll start, You'd start hearing people walking through the bushes, but then no one's out there. Um, my wife actually has one. So, and we talked about this. Um, I don't know if I did it on this show. So if I did no, cause she was actually on. So, um, uh, me and her just got together. I'd moved out of my crib and, uh, we were staying at a buddy's of mine and he basically had like a garage that wasn't attached to his house. It was like, it had like a, a breezeway going through it. And this is way out in the country. So don't judge. <laughs> but so there was no toiletry access. So if you had to go number one, you know, you just go out the back of the garage and, you know, she was out there one morning, um, going pee. And, um, yeah, this thing was actually walking up to her and it was it was splitting the grass as it came, but there was nothing there. And it was splitting the grass and it cha- literally chased like she she saw it coming, hurried up, finished her business, and went inside. And when she slammed the door, she said you could hear the footsteps onto the back porch, the doom, 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 doom. Mm-hmm. Like it, it literally followed her all the way up the back porch. And so yeah, there are. I, I do have uh, quite a few of those encounters. Um, like I've said before, mine are uh, a lot of um, paranormal and, and you know, and less less crypt or inhumanoid. But yeah, and then there's uh, that whole neighborhood that I lived in. It was um, right by Kramer Lane in, in North Lamar. Oh yeah, and uh, yeah, everybody everybody I knew they'd be like, yeah hear voices at night, you know, I, I have the story where I was listening to B93.3, the buzz back in, back in the eighties and, uh, um, listening to personal Jesus and the solo came around and I heard the, that eternal voice. It was like on the radio, but it was in my head and it was everywhere around me. Tell me to give up my faith in God. You know, it literally said, give up your faith. You know, and I was like, yeah, Deb, <laughs> just put the covers over my head. <laughs> I didn't hear nothing. Yeah, but yeah, and we um, we had a, a sliding window in front of the in front of the kitchen sink. And um, instead of going vertical, it went sideways. So it was it was wider than it was tall. And, you know, you're your kids, so you do the dishes. But um You'd be doing the dishes, and every every time, almost like clockwork, there would be this guy standing behind you, you know, sitting there watching you, you know. But it had it was featureless; um, uh, you couldn't really make it out. It wasn't a shadow person, but it, it just didn't have any features. So that thing was there. That was in the house, um, and all. And, and a lot of the neighborhood streets were 
Native American names, you know, like, um, well, there's actually, um, what, like, uh, Indian Head Drive, that was a little bit further up north. Um, then you had, like, um, uh, Comanche Trail or whatever, you know, like, yeah. it was just kind of weird. And I was like, you know, th I thought that whole place was kind of weirded out, man. And it, and it was high crime, too. Like yeah, that's, what, say, that's a rough area, dude. Mm -hmm. Kramer, over there, Kramer Lamar is like Runberg and Lamar. That that's and, and, and Rutland. Rutland, yeah. We exactly. do a lot of security over there, and we charge a premium for that. I'm like, when they tell me where they're at, they always try to like play it off, like, oh, it's not that bad. I'm like, yeah, I know where you're at. That's yeah. bad. Don't yeah. try to tell me that's not bad. <laughs> and they're like, but you know, it's yeah. a newer complex. I'm like, I don't care. Doesn't matter. We had a new boat and then shark infested water. I don't mean anything. Right. I mean, right. Either, you know. Yeah, hey, yeah, Ken, it's like, your heart, yeah. Uh, says says hi to everybody. Hey, Ken, what's going on, man? Ken. Yeah, that's uh, like a that's like a step up from St. John's. You know, what I mean? it's like it's not as bad, but it's St. Still John's. Bad. Like, <laughs> yeah, that's pretty. That's Back pretty in the rough, day. Dude. Back in the day. Uh, thank you, Hunter, for the donation. I appreciate it. It's funny. I was taking my my two youngest sons to uh, jujitsu jiu out in that area. And um, they're doing it for for a little while, and uh, I was like, because my 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 oldest son, he's like, he wanted to be like me. He's like, oh man, I'm gonna be a gangster like you, Dad. And I'm like, no, dude. I was like, I'm gonna drive you through my old hood. I'll show you. I'll show you some hood. You know, I went through like St. John's, and everything's all painted beautifully, and it's like nice apartments, and they're all new. <laughs> he's like, <laughs> Yeah, he's like, dude, this ain't hood. I was like, it's funny you say that, clear. Joe, because we, we just took an account off of St. John, and it's like nice, like they, it's a nice place. <laughs> exactly. I'm thinking it's gonna be all like we go over there and we're like, oh, they gentrified it. It's all, it's all right, like yeah. walking their dogs and stuff, and they got their own yeah. little cleaning service and everything. So not a bad place. I mean, you know, but I do remember when it was Thug Gangster Central, man. Oh yeah. Like, Dude, they would they would shut the whole neighborhood down on the weekends. Like you couldn't even go in and out at certain times. There was like curfew almost, you know. Yeah. Because yeah. because all the prostitution and all the dealing and all that stuff is crack I'm, houses all, on every corner. And yeah. run, from, from that whole area, I think from there all the way down to run from Runberg all the way up to St. John's, there was nothing good there. And even right, on 183 no. in Lamar, that whole four corners right there was like yep. shooting, stabbing. Every time I drove through there, you know, you, there would be like some cop flying by to go stop somebody from doing whatever, or somebody in an ambulance. Yeah. There was always something there, and it, that, yeah. that was probably the butthole of the city. I mean, really, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. no doubt, no doubt. But that was my stomping grounds when I was a kid. So, like, when when we'd sneak out and in like you know fifth grade, fourth grade, fifth grade, that's where that's where we were walking around at at two in the morning. And then they had that little, it was like almost like a little barrio that was uh, right there behind um, the 183, the bus station right there. I oh, forgot yeah. What it was called. Yeah, that, that place, you didn't, no, nah, you, 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 unless you, unless you knew someone or you had an escort, there's like a homeboy that was taking you there, you didn't go there. Still bad but, over you know, there. Gilwood. Yeah. Gilwood yeah, was like Gilwood, a nightmare. Yeah. But, but what I was getting at is like, a, it's it's weird how um, the negative energy follows the locations, you know what I mean? So it's like, and I think that I think that bad things happened back in the spot on that on that land when it was just land, or even during like you know, um, it could be you know old school battles or whatever, but something tainted those areas mm -hmm. and. And that's the reason why uh, it's that negative energy just continues to flow. Like you're talking about that apartment um, being in the same spot when um, I think it was Anthony was looking at the architecture of it. It's it's like uh, the same thing as like um, the premises for Ghostbusters. You know what I mean? Like Dana's apartment was dead center on the original art. You know, and it, yeah, it's a movie, but there is you know truth in the stem of it. You know that that just like when people say that they go to Gettysburg and they can you know they, they see hauntings and stuff like that because it was a it was a um, a high energy and you know you can have a high positive or a high negative energy 
and it, yeah. it literally soils the the ground you know i'll give yeah. you an example of that and this is funny you know because i don't know if barton's in the chat but i give barton credit when I was reading his book in Humanoids, when I read his book back in 2010, I think it was 2010, I was working, I did security at a place called Rio Lotto back in the mid nineties. And it was a tragic thing that happened there. One young man, uh, they were teenagers, literally shot another one over uh, drugs and turf and whatever. And uh, I was a little older and I was about three or four years older than these men that did this. They were like late teens, whatever. And I couldn't believe that senselessness, you know, of that. And I knew both of them. You know, what's sad was that neither one of them were really bad kids, but they were playing for two different teams. And so I knew at some point because they had bad blood and I had tried to talk to them. Well, they didn't really mess around. They kind of kept to themselves when I was there. But that night I wasn't there. I was on another uh, another uh, place uh, on the east side there, the other place called Mason, Maine, it was notorious for just violence and gangs, and it was blood territory. And so so was Rio Lotto, but this other kid, he was playing for another team. And um, so he shot this kid, and, and of course, I show up as the, this had just happened. And his mother um, and me had, had gotten to know each other, you know, and she was trying to get him out of it. And, and when I was there, they didn't really mess around. And I'm not saying like, oh, I'm the sheriff of this town, but – I, they had respect for me because I was pretty uh, I was pretty aggressive when it came to dealing with people acting up, you know. And so it was the housing authority, which we still do sometimes, you know. Um, but I remember that. And, and so I was working there one night, and it was completely shut down. There was a fence around it, and it, it was abandoned. And the only thing that they used it for was training for the police and the fire department. They would use it for training, and it was empty. So the, 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 it was just the apartments were still there and they hadn't gutted it completely yet. And the fire department had knocked a bunch of holes in it yet. And so I was walking around doing my rounds one night and I heard bang. And it was right there on building seven where this happened. And I was like, and, it, and I was coming around the corner of where that happened. And I kid you not, I remember thinking, and this is weird because this is April, right? And it was in May. I remember it happened in May. And I was like, this was, and it was like like May 5th or something. Like my brother's birthday, I remember that. It was like Cinco de Mayo. And I was like, it was a couple days after that. And I was like, what is this? And so I look at the calendar and I'm like, it was May 7th. And it was, but it would have been in the in the daytime. And this happened at night. So I thought maybe, maybe it was close to the day that it happened. But I couldn't remember exactly what day it was because I didn't even do the report for that because it wasn't my 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 job. Um, but it was, it was, it really stuck with me. And I just remember reading Barton's book. And of course, in Humanoids, it was, it was always make no bones about it. It's one of my favorite books. I got, I got the original copy sitting right over there. It's worth over a thousand bucks. I'm not kidding. Cause there was only a couple hundred of them that were made. And so we were sitting there and, and, and I, and I was, I was sitting there in my truck and I heard that noise, that bang. And this was a year before my friend Roger had taken his own life. Um, he had PTSD really bad. So I called him, and he was living in Hawaii. And I said, hey, man, you're not going to believe this. I was like, you remember that night? The night? He knew the incident and everything. And he says, yeah, I remember that. And I said, do you remember we showed up, and, and there was a guy named Mendez that was working there? And I said, do you remember um, what happened? I said, when was that? And he's like, oh, it was early May. You know, because he, he remembered. And I said, well, you know, you're not going to believe this, but I was walking and I went through there and I, I heard that loud bang. Um, and it was just, it freaked me out, man. I was like, I, you know, and I was reading Barton's book. Um, I don't think it was that time. I was reading it like maybe months later or whatever, but I was reading it. We were there for a couple of years, but I just remember reading his book there and it freaked me out, man. And I heard noises coming from that creek all the time. I hear weird noises coming from that creek back there. And uh, I just remember thinking, man, <laughs> I am like locked up in this place. If something were to happen here and my nephew had one of my nephews, Zane, had worked it. And he saw this weird something crawling around near the playground that looked like a like a small ape like monkey looking thing. But that it, it kind of like disappeared. And I thought, really? But then this other guy, we called him Chichu. He was a friend of mine. He used to work downtown with me. 
And Chichu told me, he says, dude, he goes, I saw this weird. And when he started describing verbatim what Zane had said he saw, then I started getting spooked. And I'm over there reading Barton's book. <laughs> this little book light, you know. And I heard this weird noise that sounded like a like a like a champ or something, kind of go like and I was like, I was like, okay, no, nah, I just heard that. Like I kept thinking I was hearing something. So I closed the book and I said, okay. Mr. Nunley's book is getting to my head here. You know what I mean? So, right. so I get out to go do my round and I get over there and I do, I see something like a shadow, like, like a little imp like shadow, like move over to the monkey bars. And I was like, Oh, what the hell was that dude? So then I just shined my light and just went back to my truck. And I was like, the hell with this man. And so when the patrol guy came through there, normally I would just tell him the, you know, I'm good. Don't worry about checking on me whatever. I'm not, I'm, I don't need the help or whatever. But that night when he came through, his name was Paul, I led him through the gate and I had him there. I talked to him for like an hour and I told him, I said, I'm not going to lie, I'm a little spook. And so he's kind of a redneckish dude. For, and he lives in Bastrop, actually, you know, north, just probably east of you, uh, Joe. And he goes yeah. over and he goes, he grabs Barton's book and he goes, well, there's your problem right there, reading all this spooky shit. <laughs> now you see this stuff he goes i guess you got vain and old chichi reading this stuff too i said no sir i don't have them reading that i said but uh yeah i'm reading this can you please not touch it because he always has like uh i still work with the guy too he always has like tobacco s stuff all of his all over his hands he's always <laughs> you know, and he's like mm -hmm, you know. and he's ex-marine and he's like he's like you know and i work with him at two different companies and so i told him i said paul you always have that crap in your mouth i don't want you so get this that original book i ended up selling it after i've re read it almost twice i read it two times almost two twice not quite i go i go through the pages of the book to make sure it's okay and there's like some little stain on there and it's from his dip from that crap <laughs> and so i called him up and i and i said hey you know, I'm, I'm auctioning this book off, you know, and, and for the it was, it was for the conference, uh, the first conference. I said, I'm auctioning this book off. Thanks a lot for dribbling dip spit or whatever the hell it is. <laughs> there, whatever. And he goes, I didn't do that. I said, dude, that's like you didn't spit over there, you know, at McAllen Pass. You didn't spit in the trash can and miss it. Lance, Lance was the super, uh, site supervisor uh, for the construction company. And this guy goes in there and he spits, misses the trash can. <laughs> And that, and that next day, man, he comes up to me. And that was one of his accounts. So I was working for him. Um, and he was paying me the premium, whatever. So I didn't care. And Lance comes up and he's like, hey, you tell your buddy, that goofy redneck that spits dip in <laughs> my trailer again. Blah, 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 blah. And so I called him up. Paul's like, I didn't do that. I said, you always deny it. You always deny that you always right. deny and you make a mess everywhere. And I said, and then when I sold that book, I had to tell him, look, you know, so Ken, it's funny that Ken, this is some synchronicities and all that. Ken had a copy of Barton's book that was in way better shape than mine. And in fact, me and Barton, when he mailed it to, to, to me and then I mailed it off to Barton, we all signed it. I don't know if y'all remember this, if y'all were listeners back then. And it was uh, Miguel Guerra and another na lady named Nancy that bought those books. And we signed them. And it was the original copy of the Barton Nunley book. Hold on one second. Let me just... Hold on once. I'll be right back. Oh. <laughs> I love the. I so love how we get older. We here, like, tripping on one. Sorry, Joe. When here? we get older, we make all those noises, like just getting up and sitting down. You're like, oh, yeah. well, I don't want to. I don't want to embarrass myself getting <laughs> up and tripping. I just tripped on a chonkler, so it's a good thing I didn't show what just happened. So this is his. This is the original copy of that book, right there, The Inhumanoids. Now this one, um, and and I got another copy recently, uh, but I think Daniel Jones has it because Nick Redfern had left it, and he said, "Hey, if you want that," I said, "If you have a copy." Of, of Barton's book when Nick was leaving to go to England. Um, so I got, I got to talk to Daniel because he said he left a stack of books for me. And so Nick Redfern says, I said, do you have the copy of Inhumanoids? I'll take that one if you're, because you couldn't take a bunch of stuff with him. And you know, Nick, he's such a nice guy. He's like, oh yeah, Barton's book. Yeah, I got a copy of it. Yeah. I'll leave it with Mr. Daniel. I said, okay, yeah, cool. And so Daniel, if you're listening, you better have my book. I'm supposed to be on the show in a couple of weeks. You better have my book. Um, but Daniel's a great guy. He's a really cool kid. But 
He's got a lot of good stuff. You get him on your show, Joe. He's good. He's a, he talks about the right. Aurora incident. He knows all about it. Um, but he's he's a real he's a ufologist or ufologist, as they say. Uh, one of the people that gave me a pep talk too about like always hanging in there and how things work with the UFO community and stuff. Him and Christopher Jordan and Michael Anthony, all good guys. Rob Yox, good guys. And so those are my peeps, man. But so Nick says, yeah, I got that book, yeah, man. And so whatever. So I, got, I think I'll have another copy of it. But I got this one from a from an estate sale. A guy was selling them, and I was like, he and I, he said he had all the paranormal books, whatever, blah blah blah. So I go over there. And there's this copy of that in Humanoids. And I said, I don't care about all that other stuff. I want that. And so I ended up with a couple different copies because of, because I've hunted them down. But this book right here, there's not very many of them. And it's that 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 cover right there. Now, he, you, you know, the other cover, it's got that little uh, reptile right. dude on the there. Reptile whatever. dude, yeah. Yeah. But that that's that that's the book. And so I was reading that book at, at, at Real Lotto. Doesn't, doesn't exist anymore. They leveled it down. But here's the interesting thing about this. I'm going to talk about what you said, Joe. There was a very famous ghost story. I'd say ghost story. Um, <clears throat> now, folks, you can look this up. I don't remember the names of the people. I didn't, like, commit it to memory, but I remember reading about it. And what happened was a guy was scalped right there, right there on that property, literally right there by that creek. And there's a tree, the oak tree, where he laid there to die after the Comanches had scalped him, is still there to this day. Now, it is just on the other side of the, of the iron fence. It was. Now it's all leveled now. But And I think they're actually building another complex there, believe it or not. But So what ended up happening, I read this story years ago, and it was right there. There was a school there that now is a, is a – uh, it was an Indian school where they had uh, not – one of the Comanches. Comanches weren't about learning stuff. They didn't no. care. They were like, nope. Um, but they had some some natives, and I believe they were Tonkawas, that were going to that school. And it's now got an, a plaque right there. And then there's like this convenience store and like a taco place. And then there's like uh, uh, on the other corner, there's like a subdivision, like some duplexes or something crazy. And then right back tuck up that, tucked up in there is an old Indian school with a with the Texas uh, plaque. What's it called? The history? Uh, uh, the history uh, plaque. Yeah. 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 Yeah, so they can't t tear it down or do anything to it uh, without like permission from the state or whatever. So, th but right there by that school, back in 1877, a guy was scalped by the Comanches, or 1872, I believe, something like that. Um, and so, what happened was he appeared to his sister. She saw him like a ghost, and her and she was she was dreaming. When she opened her eyes, she could see him, and he was telling her, you know, what had happened to him. And so she ran to the neighbor's uh, ranch or farm, whatever, and they saddled up, and they told the they got one of them got in touch with the Texas Rangers, and they they went out on a on a search or whatever, and they found him. Um, and he was headed toward Hornsby, which would be now be called Hornsby Bend. Back then, it was Austin's Colony. Of course, you know what that is, Joe. And so that would be the original settlement, Stephen F. Austin from the 1830s. Um, so they find him up against the oak tree, still alive. And he actually lived several years, you know, after he had been scalped. And so, yeah, it's a really weird story. So it was like the ghost of the living. But it always intrigued me because I could sit right there at that and, and look and see that tree. And there were times in the daytime in the spring when I worked there, it was so peaceful and calm. But then at night, it became a very creepy and foreboding place. And I would hear noises. And sometimes, I heard it a couple times, and I know my guards did too, you would hear like conversations. And these weren't homeless people. Not sometimes, yeah. But <laughs> you would hear like people talking like, you know, like this kind of, you know. And you would go into one of the buildings to sweep it because you had to check because you know people come in there, and um, you could hear like like voices, noises, and stuff. And I think that day when I was coming around the corner and I heard that loud, it was a gunshot. Um, it was like I think I was re either you know, something. It was replaying it or something. You know, very very weird. Yeah, yeah we'll, I, 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 I won't talk I, about it. So you're right. I subscribe to that factor, you know, the, the living dead type thing where it's like, uh, or living ghosts. Um, because when you really break it down, the, the other side doesn't have, that's where time stops existing. You know yes. what I mean? So 
it's 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 totally within the the realm of possibility that um you can go future past and present you know at any point in time um uh, and actually it's funny that you said that because uh we used to have to go down hornsby road to get to when we walk from like um uh lamar walking through you go through hornsby road to get to walnut creek and that's where we used to go play like on the weekends we'd go down to walnut creek and you know be a bunch of kids but there was a, a lot of weird stuff down there too a lot of uh weird uh like cave systems and stuff but you could tell mm -hmm. that they were man-made altered like it wasn't and it wasn't modern you know um and there was there was also like weird spots that I remember there was this one spot that where because you had like cliffside on one one end, you know, just straight up sheer cliff. And there would be like almost kind of like rectangular square, like monolith look, looking rocks. And they'd be like all along it. But in that one spot, it just, I mean, maybe it's natural. I don't know. But it was always piles and piles and piles of water moccasins. So mm -hmm. you would literally have to <laughs> jump from rock to rock to get, you know, to get down the creek because yeah, there is no, and like an unnatural amount as far as being a kid, you know, i um, looking at it. Cause you're talking prop. You ever see like a, like those balls of snakes, like when they're made oh, yeah. or whatever, they do the ball. I mean, I haven't that. seen one with my own eyes, but yeah, I know what they are. Right. Kind of like that. It's just like, it's like a bunch of cow pies put together, you know, like, like 40, 50 cow pies in one spot. And you're like, hey, what is that? And you, you first look at it and it's just, that's exactly what it looks like, you know? And then you realize that they're coiled up snakes just chilling. And, it's not like they're basking in the sun. Um, and then some of those little monolith things, they would actually kind of look like the Flintstone house. You'd see like two big <laughs> ones standing up with one on top. And you're like, we'd go in there and hang out, you know? And I did like, you know, I didn't think about it much as a kid, but you know, um, cool. as a grown man, I'm like, who moved, you know, like what did they bring down forklifts down there? And <laughs> You know, set right. these things up, <laughs> or is you know what's what's going on? But and also, yeah, you'd be sitting there, and and um, we'd be chilling out there, being little kids, smoking cigarettes and stuff, and and um, rocks would just start dropping in our direction. Like um, sometimes you'd be out there right by the creek where the actual creek was, and a big stone would just you don't know where it came from or nothing, but. Whoosh, and just smash into the water and so now now when i listen to a lot of uh the experiences i'm going wait a minute <laughs> could that have been that have been something telling me hey y'all kids get the heck out of here you know <laughs> like uh you're not welcome you know what i mean but when you're a kid you just go oh man we're having an avalanche you know you make up stuff when you're in you know third fourth grade and stuff like that it's just uh you don't you don't tie those those two and two together but yeah walnut creek has a lot of very weird stuff going on with it too very weird energy um a lot of weird spots um nine we seven go, three two you know nine yeah nine seven three nine seven yeah. three has a lot of weird stuff man i get stories yeah. out of that area all the damn time dude ufo encounter my my friend Speaking of the guy that I saw the dog man with, his brother had a UFO encounter there. And, really? Uh, yeah. When when Bettina was down, we we went over there and we visited, and he told us about it. You know his his UFO story, um, because Bettina and Maddie were here and they wanted to see where I had my dog man encounter, so I took them. And and my friend's brother was outside with his sister, so we got to talk about it. You know, um, but yeah, it was it's a uh, it's it's crazy nine seven three. That that yeah, that's on Mark Road. Mm -hmm. You talk. Are you, are you talking like the north side of nine seven three? Like where? Oh, two ninety. I mean, if, if you go uh, from, from Taylor down, down those old fields out there, Joe, all the way through okay. Rice's Crossing, yeah. go all okay. the way up into Maynard. And then when you get to Maynard, that's where the Goatman sightings start. And I still, I, I I told this to Linda Godfrey years ago before she passed. I said, you know, I think that one of those encounters that that one guy had there. 
I think that it was uh, in her book. It was one of her books. I, I can't remember which one it was. Um, it wasn't Hunting the American Werewolf. I don't think it was that one. That one was one of my favorite. But I told her, I said, that's a goat man sighting because that has to be. I mean, right there by Will Barger Bridge, right there coming off yeah. of 973. That's where all those goat man sightings happen. And in fact, my friend Chief and Loki, they've both been on the show and they both talked about the goat thing that they saw down in that creek bed. Um, and Loki talked about it live on the show. He came on the show, you know. It's it's a weird uh, uh, area. Yeah. But that Highway 71 is creepy as hell, too. I got a good dogman story out of there not about two or three months ago. If you guys want to hear that one. Um, yeah, I, be but, I believe it. They've been, I've actually, uh, uh, the dude that I used to do music with, I used to rap with, uh, I saw him at um, when we were doing my, uh, our brother's memorial. And um, he was like, Oh yeah, I heard you're getting into the you know the dog man stuff and blah blah blah. And I was like, yeah, yeah. And he's like, he's like, dude. He's like, my homeboy man. He just had his him and his whole family had a dog man experience. And he was like, they said that they were all outside. You know, they live out in the country. I think this is outside of um, probably like south of San Marcos. Um, like you're almost going to like uh, New Braunfels or shirts, like. Oh, okay. Yeah, and um, and it it wasn't far off of 35, and uh, he said that they were all um, barbecuing and hanging out. They got big property and everything, and uh, it was getting towards twilight. And sure enough, they saw this freaking giant eight, seven, eight foot dog man running like through the tree line, like you know, like. So the trees are here, but you can see his silhouette, you know, and they're like, yeah, pointy ear, you know, straight up the, the, the real high tip canines, you know, whole nine yards. And he, I was like, really, dude? I was like, I got it. Well, all right, well, let me talk to this cat, you know, and um, me and him kind of, he got his phone changed. So I haven't been able to get a hold of him, but um because he doesn't do social media. He's one of them people who are like, they're following me. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, I gotta, the ground. <laughs> so, so I gotta, I gotta, I gotta find out how to get a hold of them and get to them and see what that one was about. But I, wasn't it your book that had the, um, I, yeah, it was a dog man, but it was, it was on 290 in between like Elgin and Manor. Was that was that yours? Probably, and, and yeah, I can't off the top of my head, but I'm pretty sure we had so many different stories in that book. Um, yeah, that's what I'm saying. That my next that book that, that, that's going to be the vampire. Once I'm done with the vampire one, the next one's going to be about just a, a bevy of different cryptids around this area, and it's going to be Texas based, and it's going to be all weird uh creatures and i can't i had a name for the book and i can't remember what the name of it was no i can't say it out loud anyway but i had a name for it and me and my wife had, had we were brainstorming and she goes oh that sounds great and then today you know for some reason like every time i go to take a shower i started having all these weird thoughts i'm like i'm like like did i leave something in the car <laughs> you always do that like what is that so today i was like washing my hair and i'm going like what was the name I was going to call my book? <laughs> I don't even remember. So I go back, and as soon as I get out and I come to the, the desk, and my wife's like, we got to go to Costco. And I'm like, uh, okay, looking for something important. You know, I didn't know what, what was important. I just, it's one of those weird things. I'm trying to remember, where did I put the paper? To write? I wrote a name for my new book after the, the vampire one, and now it's driving me nuts. I've been all day trying to remember the name of it. You watch. I'll, I'll, I'll go to lay down and go to bed, and I can't go to sleep because the name yeah, is like a <laughs> You'll remember the names of somebody. You remember that guy? He used to box with me. What was that kid? He was a lightweight. Like, oh, what was his name? Dude, I, I can't other... stand that, man. And and now we we've gotten we've gotten so used to Google that we just go, ah, oh, I can't remember that show. Type in, oh, yeah. ah, blah, blah. <laughs> so you you stop using your brain. You know what I mean? And it's yeah. like it, it, it yeah. weakens you. When yeah. we were young, though, we didn't have, like, you know, a, a, a magic box that we walked around with that solved all the mysteries of the universe, you know? I mean, like, we had right. to, like, actually go to libraries and do some research, and then if you had to change the channel, 
well, you had to use your legs and go over there and do it. You, you, know, you were, were the remote, remote dude. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> For your I parents. was the youngest. I was it's, literally the remote. Yeah. They would yeah. be like, you do oh, that. You're the baby. You're the youngest. You change the channel and you're smaller yeah. and you can get over there. Like all these excuses, like, you know, and I was like, and I always sat on the floor, you know, with people's feet and you want to feel like, you know, you have some kind of authority. So you're like, they're like, I call shotgun. And they're like, I got the back seat with the window. And I'm like, back seat in the middle with my feet on the hump. I'm like, yeah, okay. <laughs> like, yeah, exactly. You just had to act like you were yeah. happy. And I'm like, yeah, that's my spot. Yeah. I'm yeah, right yeah. There. yeah. Well, I'm what's some funny is to- bitch. Right. What's funny to me about it, though, is like nowadays, all all someone has to do is jump on like TikTok or like a, a YouTube short or something. And they're like, hey, did you know that blah, 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 blah. And they just rattle off some random, you know, information. And instantly it's fact. Like no one goes back and they go checking through a book or, you know, trying to figure it out for themselves. They go, oh, and they tell the next person, did you know that Marie Antoinette, you know, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> and it's like, and then you're like, dude, it gets back to you. And you're like, no, dude, I, I know this. Like, this is, I, I was taught this in fifth grade. And no, it's not. <laughs> but then again, what we would have been taught could be, you know, history is in the eyes of the beholder. You know what I mean? <laughs> so, also, like, like they, they, there's no ability to do math anymore. Like somebody posted on Facebook the other day. They were like, if you put one penny in a jar for an entire year, you'll have $3,000. And I'm like, mm. yeah. And people yeah. were reposting this. And I'm like, well, right. I've never thought of it that way. Or they'll say, can you believe that people that, that were born in 1995 are now, you know, 40 years old? Mm-hmm. I'm like, what the freaking... What are you talking right. about? You can't do math. Like, what is wrong? <laughs> Basic math skills. It's just gone. I mean, there is no, there's nothing there. Yeah. And then they said, oh, and then I got this one the other day. I got real hot. And, I, and I'm in this one group, and I shouldn't even, I, you know, I, tr- I promise myself every day I'm not going to say anything. I'm not going to say anything. Then I go look, and I get, you know, I say something. And this guy said, well, that was during the Battle of Waterloo, and that was when the Prussians fought the Russians. And I'm like, what? <laughs> I get really mad and I'm like, dude, we're on the same team. You know, and I was right. like, you know, and then you know, and they were like, Napoleon was was he was German just like Hitler. And they're like, you're like <laughs> and then I'm just I'm I'm uh, you know, it's like fingers on the chalkboard to me. Dude. They cannot stand or or the people that think they know Roman history and they get Julius mixed up with Augustus and all these other, you know, like and I just I just type on their Swetonius. The twelve Caesars, go mm-hmm. read it, please. You just shut up, please shut up. And then they don't realize that the, that the Claudio Julians were not all a, a one long lineage, and that there was a a breakup. And then that somebody said, "Well, the final uh, Claudio Julian." And I'm like, "That is not the end. Is not that's the beginning, you know?" And then I get upset because I can't. I just I can't take it. it yeah, bothers dude. Me. I- stand it dude i get i get the same way man like especially like it happens probably once a year at least where i'm trying to explain how the original calendar worked you know oh, i'm yeah. like so you know why is october octo nova's no you know nova's for nine octo's for eight but yet mm-hmm. it's the you know and and i'm like and now i'll blow your mind and they're like what and i'm like july and august that's julius and augustus, julius and augustus. Like, no way yeah, they're like, no way. And I'm like, dude, do the, do them. And there should be 13 yeah. months of 28 yeah. days. Yeah. And these people are like, where are you getting your information from? And then you're, it's like this cult of ignorance. You're the card. And I'm like, right, right. Everybody pees in the pool yeah. with you. And they're like, you didn't pee in the pool. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, no, yeah because no. December is DECA. So that's the 10th month. And then January yes. is the 11th. And then, you know, February. April is 1st is actually the, the new year. Right. Exactly. Yeah. But don't understand it's, that. They don't know that. And they're yeah. like, and if I say anything about it, they're like, oh, that you that's from the moon god. Yeah, I'm, you know, shut up. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's from how that's from history. That's that's <laughs> then they'll be calling you history. at night. Hey, oh, I gotta tell you, you know, Josh Turner, uh, he worships the moon god. Okay, I gotta tell you that. Uh I thought I'll let you know. Like, dude, <laughs> nobody freaking even cares, man. Who cares, dude? 
<laughs> I heard him on the show yeah. talking about the moon. He, he said the moon had 13 months. I'm telling you, that's satanic. That's satanic right there. <laughs> but no, it's, it's, it's true. It. Like, yeah, it's it's true how how, how like um, these these newer generations have, have like literally thrown common sense out the window because it's it's literally common sense. Math is yeah. you know like math is easy to do in your head. You know how to do it. Um, don't believe everything that you hear and only half of what you see. You know what I mean? Like these are traditions that we upheld and we and we know it for ourselves. Like just like we knew our phone numbers, you know. And and nowadays it's like uh, it's just you're you're just going off of a whim, and it's it's kind of disheartening. <laughs> you know? Have you like, seen the movie Idiocracy? It's like yes. Heading in that direction, it's happening a lot quicker than Judge thought it would. Yeah, yeah. it's so, it's yeah. becoming a documentary, is what it's. It's, it's no longer it was a movie. Filmed here. <laughs> it was filmed here. I got friends who were in that movie, dude. I'm like, dude. Uh, yeah, because they filmed it in Austin, right? Yeah. yeah. And then and then he goes to get to get the food, big ass fries, and you're like, <laughs> I'm doing the leg press one night. I might have said this already on the show, but I look up. And I'm like, I'm like just dying my, my last set. And I'm looking up and I see this giant fan going. And it says on on the on big the ass big ass fan. And I'm like, what? <laughs> yep, that's what an English. And yeah. I showed Nelly, I said, look at this. <laughs> Those are what? popular. Yeah. <laughs> there are two different gems that I work out at. I'm like, what is this? Is it two, the big ass fan? <laughs> We're putting the word ass in there, you know, like now just I don't know. The first time right, I yeah. saw that on a set of plans, I thought it was a joke. I thought the architect <laughs> was joking with me. You were looking at that. What is this crap? You know, like, that, that, that can't be. Right. <laughs> oh, dude, that is so crazy. Yeah, I just I yeah. couldn't believe it. And then when I went to another gym, I saw I saw it too. Just I was doing that uh, hack squats, and you when you get off, you put your hands on your hips, and you if you're me anyway, you arch your back and go, oh god. Because that's you're trying to get oxygen, you know. And I look up and I'm like, another one in a different gym. So yeah. I was like, man, we can't get away from the big ass. I mean, it's just <laughs> around. You know? I just put two uh, ten foot ones in a restaurant in Fort Worth. <laughs> They're everywhere. And they put the they put the name, the word. I know. You would never have seen that. Now and then, then one day right. I was walking downtown a few years ago, and I was I was I was my wife. Uh, we had some company come into town and me, my wife, and, and, and everybody were walking downtown. And you would never have seen this back when I worked downtown. And Joe, you 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 know downtown like anybody else. And they were passing out flyers and it said big ass, a big wet ass butt party. And I'm like, what? And it was like <laughs> oiled up people or something, you know. And I'm like, I'm just like, dude, what is that, dude? Like you would never have seen that on a flyer back when I was down there because right, yeah, there was still yeah. some decorum. They'd be like, "Well, we have ladies that dance around," you know. Um, they wouldn't act like that. Yeah. They weren't, you know, Victorian <laughs> transatlantic <laughs> accent. But <laughs> like, we have women that are very beautiful. Come, you know. No, right, they just yeah. they would hand you a flyer, but it would it'd be like foam party, you know. Yeah, yeah, all the foam party. Hey, come yeah, big yeah. wet ass butt party, you know. Oil yeah, butt party, yeah. You know? You're like, what is this? I mean. No, I, I remember in the in the in the late eighties, early nineties when it started seeping into television because you know, like it got to the point where you could say damn, but you couldn't say like G D, you know, and then it started like just spreading. And especially with like and I hate to say it because I love The Simpsons, but it, it like spread it with a, like that era, you know, it was like and I was Family like, Guy got just, real yeah. real mouthy. Did know? they just say that on te you know, on regular, you know, antenna television not just cable you know but mm -hmm. like i remember going you know like thinking man we're we're you know even at a, as a young kid i was like we're going downhill man <laughs> we're coming <laughs> once you start yeah you start using the b word and, and you know and stuff like well, that. well i said the b I'm, word I'm, earlier like because because you know when we were young and not to be vulgar but that was if you rode in the middle in the back you rode yeah back. yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah yeah so yeah. like you know you when you're a kid you're, you didn't say i would dare and i dare cuss oh no I would just, yeah i'd be like yeah, yeah i'm in the middle and you know and they'd be like yeah we know you are that's <laughs> right. but yeah you're but in the worst spot go ahead you can have it kid um, yeah but it was yeah, just such a shocker 
yeah, it's just such a shocker to hear it like on, you know, Rabbit Ear. You know, like if you had HBO or Cinemax, whatever, yeah. fine, you heard it all. But, you know, if you're like sitting there watching Fox at, you know, 8 30, 9 o'clock at night, and you hear something like that for the first time, you're like, whoa, they <laughs> they broke the gambit, man. <laughs> like, <laughs> there's no going back now. Pushing the envelope, pushing the envelope to now. It's like, and and you know I'm gonna say this, but they were they show full on full frontal nudity for for men especially. You don't really see it with women. All you see, and I'm gonna tell you something, and people think I'm crazy about this. They show men that do it there, and they show mm -hmm. women up here because Baphomet, you right. know, uh, you know, and yeah. all of them, all of them, they are all hermaphroditic looking, and they all have right. boobs with that. Yeah, so that's why they show together. men that way because the people that run it. They're originally from a place where that's what they did. They worshipped that. Hmm. Right. They were fire worshippers, uh, phallic worshippers, and worship snake them. eaters, and this is what they did. And now they're running our world. And people yeah. tell me, oh, you're a conspiracy theorist. I'm like, until it becomes true. Then it's not a conspiracy <laughs> anymore. Then it's like, okay, that's what's happening. You know? Yeah, exactly, man. Yeah, yeah. and it's it's just, it's, it's, uh, you know, it's 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 part of the agenda, and it's part of the the bringing down from a um, from a uh, a wholesome Christian society into, or Do even I'm, a godly society into a uh, you know a, a, a paganistic society. You know, that's how I personally feel about it. You know, I'm not trying to bring my beliefs on to anybody else, but that's just the way I see it. You yeah, know? that's exactly what they're doing. And would you see that? You see, thank you, Amber, for that donation. I'm starting to think nobody loved me no more. Nobody um, loves me anymore. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, th this um, the story I got was off of seventy one. If anybody wants to hear it, I'm waiting yeah. for donations. Though nobody's donating anything, so I'm not going to tell it. I'm just going to sit here. <laughs> <laughs> Since no apparently money. I, beg, I beg for money. That's what's funny. If you've seen the show, you never seen me begging for money. Right. But my my enemies he, that I go on there and I beg for money. And one lady was trolling me on my Facebook, and she was like, "Yeah, over there begging for money." I'm like, "When when did this does this happen?" Yeah. These people keep saying this. I'm like, "When is this happening?" Because this has not happened, but they keep saying it. And I'm like, "Okay, so you just keep saying it becomes true." Right. Like, That's ridiculous. Right. I've never done that. That's crazy. <clears throat> Now, I'm interested in the 71 story just because that's my backyard, pretty much. I need yeah. to come down to where y'all are because you've got, like, the market on all the... There's nothing <laughs> going on up there where you're at. It's just... Huh? It's, just dead. it's just dead up there. Nothing going on up there. Well, there's stuff going on. It just... No, no, not, re not really. Well, no. There is, like, over in Brown mm -hmm. Springs is interesting. Yeah, no, I don't think yes. they do. What area are you from? My bad. I, I, I totally spaced out on her. Forget no, I'm, I'm, up, um, I'm up in Texoma. Up on the border with... Oh, you're in Texoma? Oh. Yeah. Now that is... I thought you were talking about Dallas. I was even yeah. going on. I work in Dallas. I live up in Texoma. Oh, uh, Texoma. Yeah. There's some weirdness happening up mm -hmm. there. I'm not going to lie. That, that Choctaw area up there, I had some weird stories. I had a, a tribal police tell me some weird stuff, man. Um, okay, I stand corrected. That's where you're at. I thought you were talking about because I teased uh, Starscream. He said something was going on. I'm like, what? In McKinney? Yeah, there's nothing going on in McKinney. Nothing going on in McKinney besides like urban sprawl. Yeah. <laughs> but I did. No, I, I I take that back. I did get a crawler story out of McKinney. McKinney. Yeah. Really? Yeah. Because I looked it up for Star Starscream. Asked me to look. He's like, is there anything going up in my? I was like, no. <laughs> Like straight up, like no, dude. There's nothing going on up there. So I looked it up and I did find a crawler story, but it was just kind of like somebody saw something run across the road. No, thing, you know, no. there was a dog man report like years ago, like on the outskirts of McKinney. Like really? On the, yeah, on the fringe, and it's it. I've only ever heard one, and it, the the guy was, I guess, in a new subdivision. He was out on his back porch, and he saw one coming out of the woods. If I remember correctly. Hmm. Wow. Huh. 
But well, that was a fascinating story. We're going to shut it, the show down with that one. Thank you, folks. <laughs> That's <laughs> all I remember. That's all I remember. <laughs> I would, I would tell you more. You think Monica for blowing your minds? <laughs> Two hundred fifty people. Goodbye. We'll see you. <laughs> yeah, thanks. We'll leave you on that. <laughs> Joe, next time, just you and me, bro. <laughs> Monica's like, fine, I don't care. You're, you're overbearing <laughs> masculine <laughs> energy, you know, whatever. <laughs> Thank you for that That's donation, funny, baby. Yeah. Anti urban sprawl funds. <laughs> uh, okay, so here, here's what I got I got a report out of 71. I got a few of them. But there was one in particular, and I've been saving this one. I was going to do it on a Sunday, but I got a full baby of things going on on Sunday. See, now I'm using that word because I, I said it, you know. Um, Anthony, if you're there listening or if you're whatever, you got that text from Marty. He's probably listening to the show. If you are, give the guy a call. We got somebody doing something over there. Okay. okay. Guy's wearing a red beanie. <laughs> Come on, dude. You wear a beanie. It's not even, it's not even cold outside. Not like, wearing a beanie, you know? like, you're not conspicuous with a red beanie on. Nobody's going to know. Uh, you're up there looking in cars. How'd you it's know? Only... Or you look like Tyrone Biggums because you got the red right. beanie on. Like, got any more of that stuff I can steal out your car? Uh, no, we don't. Sorry. It's 86 degrees at midnight. I'm wearing a beanie. <laughs> it's like in the 80s. Like, you know, he's like, I'm cold out here. Well, no, no, it's it's sixty seven or what? See, whatever. So it's, I guess he could get away with it. Yeah, where it's pretty it, obvious. If you're gonna do something suspicious, don't wear a red beanie or a red hair. It's like this. Like, here we go. Time to go rob some people. Nobody will notice me wearing this <laughs> yeah. red hat. Like, good grief, man. Yeah, that was like all the cats that were wearing the when the. The big Raiders, the starter jerseys. Got yeah. like, I'm like, Dude, you're in Texas, bro. <laughs> you're in Texas and it's August. Why are you wearing a freaking starter? They would. They'd be at the bus stop first day of school. It'd be like August. <laughs> we would go back to school until high school. And then in high right. school, we started going back in August. But the kids would already be wearing like their winter clothes. We'd be like wearing like, like a Dallas Cowboys, like, you know, or Longhorns, <laughs> you know, pullover. And you're like, dude, I'm in two a days football, so I'm, I'm I know these kids are something wrong with these kids. I said, man, I, I'm like in shimmel short, you know, shimmel shirt because I'm <laughs> playing ball, and I'm like, I'm out there in that heat, and these kids are wearing like, you know, pullovers and stuff. You know right. that they don't play sports. You yeah. can look and see that dude does not play sports because you know you'd be out there dying, and you're not gonna. As soon as you're done, the only thing you want to do is take a shower and then go eat something and go to sleep. And you don't want to wear something bulky and hot. So you could right. always tell the kids that didn't play ball because they'd be wearing starter jackets and, and hoodies at like, in like August. So you're like, this is crazy. You, you know, <laughs> whatever. To each his own. So yeah. so the story I got, th this one was crazy. And it's kind of a, a messed up story. But, you know, Austin's Colony. It's right there right. by Austin's Colony. And um, it, it's it kind of like the, the road kind of goes from Austin's Colony back up in there and then you hit back on to 71 and then it I, I can't remember the name of that road um uh, but it, are you talking about uh uh 1209 uh, yeah let, you know what let me look it up you're talking about the colony and bastrop or actually well it's know? going toward that way yeah because you got the colony on 1209 and that goes that's actually a texas chainsaw massacre part two film uh location just for the people that like horror movies. But yeah, um I do know that area. That's where like Zendik Farm used to oh, yeah. come out. You're right. It is 1209. 1209, yeah. It is, yeah. So this person they lived in Austin Colony, but they were going down that road and they were headed to Bastrop in that area back in that area, which you would go past your place, you know, near near where you live. Yeah. Yeah. And so they, they were going through there and it was it was a it was a brief encounter, but it was a freaky encounter. And it's okay now, folks. If you get, if you're offended easily, or if you feel weird or something about something, um, this this animal, this creature, whatever, whatever this thing was, I don't know what it was. They said it looked like an animal. I don't really think these things are animals, but something was running alongside the road, and it kind of went off into a ditch, and then it came back onto the road and ran out in front of their vehicle, and they they, they had already slowed down and and like had kind of veered off and then got back onto the road. And when they did, 
this creature began to run alongside them, but it had a dachshund in its mouth. And so I thought that was really, really freaky. And when it would run, it was really just kind of running on its hind legs with its arms out in front of it. And it was like literally like putting its, I don't want to call it a hand or a paw. Um, but Neil, the guy that told me this, he said that it was like slapping the back window where his like 12 year old daughter was screaming at the top of her lungs. Uh, and this was like in 2009. So it happened a while back, but dude, it was crazy, man. Like he gave me this story and he said that this thing was running along and it totally like traumatized his daughter and his son and his wife, everybody, they were a family of four. And he said, dude, it traumatized my whole family, especially my daughter. Because he said that this thing was like holding a dachshund in its mouth and, and it, there was like blood all over its face and it was smacking the window while they were trying to drive. He goes, dude, I'm driving a Subaru, you know, like it's not a big car. I'm not, it's not like, a, like I'm going to, you know, and it's not going to go fast. It's not going to do any of that. It's just there, you know. And he and he's a pretty cool guy. I've known him for years. But he said, dude, it, it, I had never no, knew, known that he had had this encounter. And he used to work for me years ago. And he said, dude, I have an encounter. Well, actually, Derek, his, his best friend, had told me, he said, dude, he's like, you know, you, you should uh, talk to Neil. He had an encounter with one of these things. And he told me where. And I said, oh, man. And so I always wondered about that because back in 2012, we were working the pools over there at Austin Colony. And um, I went down that down that back road, kind of back up in there where he was at. And it's actually the the director, the Texas director for the NADP, which is the IDP now, I guess, Art Vier. Um, he lives back up in that area. And I think I talked to him about this case and this vehicle or whatever, this you know, that it eventually it pushed the vehicle with one arm. Um, I would call it an arm. It's supposed to be a leg, but it's not. And it kind of made the back end kind of do this. You know, like he said, it wasn't a real big car. And he said that, dude, you know, he was like, my daughter. Um, he said that it was right before he got a divorce. And he thinks, this is crazy. He thinks that, uh, not crazy, but weird, you know, that maybe it contributed to his uh, breakup with his wife. Because after that happened, his daughter had all kinds of mental problems. And she ended up going to a massive amount of therapy. And there again, the therapists are no help. They're like, oh, are you sure you saw this? And he's like, I saw it too. So then they wanted to like do this weird thing where they wanted her to go into some sort of inpatient and him and his wife disagreed on it. She's like, well, maybe it'll help her. And he's like, no, because they're trying to tell her that it didn't happen. Right. And so it yeah. became a big old source of contention. And then they led to a lot of fighting. And eventually he said, you know, he had been drinking and there was a lot of uh, disagreeing, you know, and eventually they just, uh, they got a divorce by 2013, they were divorced. And, um, you know, I wonder about that. Like if, if this creature, whatever it was, and, and he asked me, you know, he's, and he's like, do you think, what do you think it was? And I told him, I said, well, they call it a dog, man. And he goes, well, it didn't look like a dog. And I said, yeah, I know that's and people in Texas always say the same thing. Doesn't look right. like a dog. Why do they call it that? Well, it's from a term from Michigan. And I tell people that I don't personally subscribe to it or agree with the name. But it the thing it looked was blackish gray, kind of a smoke gray color. And like you described earlier, the ears were kind of high up. And it had like these, the ears were really tall, like long. And the, the snout was extremely elongated, uh, but kind of wide. And it was holding a, a dog in its mouth, like a deceased uh, dog. Um, and it was running alongside the, the vehicle and it was almost like it just, he goes, this thing just came out of nowhere. He goes, and in fact, we were just driving and then it just like appeared you know, like this, you know, and he described it as a demon. He just said it was some kind of demon and it just showed up and it just ran you know, and it just ruined my life. Um, you know, and so he worked Man. for me years ago. Um, and we did a bodyguard job together. It was funny because, um, not funny, but we did a bodyguard job and I ended up having a weird dream when I was working out at Steiner Ranch. And I talked about that on the show, seeing these blue like creatures with these horns. And I don't know what they were, but it was like I was remote viewing something that I probably shouldn't have been seeing or whatever. But um, yeah. no, that, that's crazy you say that, man, because that, that drudged up... Uh... A memory that I had. Um, so you have let me do this right for the camera. You got 71 that goes east to west, right? And then 
1209 branches and goes this way and then 969 comes along and takes you all the way into Bastrop. So there is that little section of 1209 in there. And <clears throat> this had to be probably like uh, 94, 95, maybe 96 ish. And um, it was me and two other buddies and we were riding in his truck. And so back then out here and you know th there was nothing out here it, it, you can um if you ever watched Texas chainsaw massacre the very beginning intro piece is that that section mm -hmm. i didn't even know that till just recently so it wasn't like i was putting two or two together in my nugget but uh that's where my buddy uh we'll call him k that's where he lived his mom lived right down there there you you zoom around and then you come to the bottom of a hill and then that's his driveway. And then you can keep going and you hit 969, which will take you back out to 71 once again. But um, it was like three in the morning. There's nothing out there for miles. There's no like the, the closest convenience store or and convenience stores don't stay open past 11 o'clock in the country. So there's no houses really out there. Like even his driveway um, took about 10 minutes to get from the, the beginning of the driveway to his house. So there's literally nothing out there. And we're cruising back home, you know, and we're not even, this is a time where we weren't really drinkers. We weren't, you know, toasted or nothing like that. And right before you go down that hill, we kind of both like look over because this dude like caught our attention and it's, there's just this guy and he's standing like literally on the side of the road, like before the drainage ditch, because every country road has a drainage ditch, but he's standing like, and he's probably about six foot tall, like a big dude. And he's standing there in all black with long black hair, like really, really long black hair just staring at the road so like he's looking in this direction we're going this direction and we're like dude what in the like and i that might be right around that same spot but yeah we were like yo man you were like you know what was he doing out there like there's no walking around out there there's nothing you know like there's no houses out there like I don't know, man. It was it was it was really freaking weird. And I didn't even think of that until you started telling that story, man, because that's right about the same spot. It's right when you pass the colony on 1209. So it's it's maybe, I don't know. It was, that's it just weirded me out. You know, th that story was weird because when I asked Neil and somebody had posed the question. There was a couple of comments here that went kind of weird. Uh, Dick Richards says, blue horn, remote viewing, squeeze me. Um, I'll explain to that in a minute, Dick, if you haven't been paying attention from the other past shows or whatever, and shame on you for not. Um, I'm how dare you? But, uh, how dare you? <laughs> how dare you? How dare you? How dare you drive a car? Uh, but anyway, that's my impression of uh, what's her name from the... You know, Little, the little angry kid that this because you're supposed to be not driving cars. Um, but anyway, <laughs> but anyways, um, anyway, I can do it. See that? The bottom line is this. I believe that that was a werewolf. Those were his words. That's what Neil told me that because I said, what do you think it was? And he says, well, it wasn't a dog, man. And I think at first he kind of like me and my brother had talking about it. He thought we were messing with him. Like, we were, like he got offended or something. And I said, dude, we weren't, we're not telling you that it wasn't what you saw, you know, um, but it was through a, through a third party though. We told one of his, our friends, it was a mutual friend and he kind of got offended. So he sent me some kind of weird looking like weird message, you know, like, like he types really bad. <laughs> it's horrible. <laughs> and he doesn't, and I'm not knocking on you, Neil. If he, he don't watch the shows, I can talk about it. I'm guilty about. as charged. <laughs> yeah, but he I was like, he typed some weird stuff like, if the time to be for that was not a dog, no man could be like for no. that. Be for if. And it's like he he drives and texts, which is terrible. And he'll be like sitting there drinking a coffee and texting. <laughs> you know? And it, I rode with him one time. We were joined at 360. And I hear 
and the traffic is really heavy. You know that, Joe. It gets bad out here. Oh, I said, man. Dude, why do you got your knee on the steer? Dude, pay attention to the road, man. I would come out to Steiner Ranch, and he was, like, texting. He's like, my girlfriend's being a dickhead. And I'm like, okay, so she's being a dickhead. She's going to kill us <laughs> because of that? Because that's not a good excuse for me to die because, you know, she's mad at you. And I said, besides yeah. that, you probably did something piss her off anyway. Um, so anyway, I've known the guy for years. And so he, when he, and plus the, the mutual friend of ours is kind of, he likes to be a little jerk anyway. So he teased him about it. And I said, don't tease him about it because then he thinks we're messing with him. So when I talked to him about the story, he basically told me point blank. He's like, I think it was a freaking werewolf. I don't know what a dog man is. And I said, okay, well, you know, and I had been needing to talk to him about that anyway. I didn't realize how traumatic it was. And I didn't know that it had, he's not like my best friend or anything. But it's, it's, I, I didn't know that he blamed that for his marriage falling apart. But I told him, I said, this isn't unprecedented. These things do evil, nasty things. Right. They bring darkness. That's why the skinwalker is such an ominous thing because, you know, I had a native friend of mine and she was saying that nothing good follows the coyote. Yeah. When it's the skinwalker, you know, that, that that's what that is. I mean, it's a bad thing. <clears throat> and some people they don't really understand like the the severity of what these things are. It's not just it's right. there's a dark energy to these things. Yeah, and so, because yeah, people people tend to just look at the animalistic part of it and not attach to the energy that's actually behind it. That, yeah, that fashioned it. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. And they don't I understand do. that, and they and then. You got to explain to people like, look, man, there's more to it. It's just like people think that you come on here and you talk for a couple of hours and that's the whole show. And then like, oh, that's it, folks. I just came and sat here and talked for, you know, there's a lot of preparation that goes into any episode you do. I mean, you have to like say, I got my notebook like right here. You know, you got to you got to have the, the info, you know, yep. you can't just come out here and, you know, you know, the, well, nothing to talk about. We're just going to sit here. You know, you got to have something. I mean, you know. It, just, you know, it's just common sense. Yeah. So Dick, what, what, what we were talking about was I am not a remote viewer and I don't claim to be, but I don't know what that was. I had a dream when I was doing a bodyguard job of a woman whose uh, ex-husband was literally trying to kill her. I mean, not joking. Like he was, he, he tried to break in through the back door um, the second week we were there. And so he, he actually did. And then he tried to grab the kids at the McDonald's, which was ridiculous. It was just like the dude did all kinds of stuff. Um, but I, I had this weird dream. I, I went to the sitting room. Well, it was the den or whatever we call it, the sitting room. And I, I fell asleep. There was no TV in there and nothing. And uh, Scorpio was there that night. He was working upstairs. And this, I had this dream of these blue horned creatures that were behind this fence, like this big 10 foot tall Constantino wired fence. And there was a guy up in a, like a guard tower and they were watching them and they were doing this weird like swaying back and forth and stomping their feet. And they had hooves. They looked like blue haired, white, white and bluish hair. Like it was weird, man. Like goat, like goat man. But with these weird kind of curved off Danzig looking horns. And I was like, what in the hell am I looking at here? And I woke up and I kept thinking, Dude, they need to stop them. Why are they letting them do that? Because what they were doing was some sort of ritual. And I got the impression that the people that had them there didn't know what they were doing. But that stomping and all that noise, that was a conjuring of something. Right. And I was like, these there were human guards. And I thought, why are they letting them do this? This is not good. And I just remember waking up. But that was when I was doing that particular bodyguard job or whatever. But I worked with that guy. And anyway, he, he he had this dog man story, and he, at that time it, it hadn't happened, you know, but um, it happened in two thousand and nine. So, what's up, Joe? What's up, Joe's wife? He said, "What's up, Joe's wife?" She can't hear you because of the no headphones. Yeah. Haven't seen you since the conference. We need to get together. We need to go out there to the to the gas station. I have the shirt here. I'm gonna wear it next Friday. If you come back on, I'll wear it next Friday. Yeah, I'll be your Friday. Yeah, we'll, we'll do it again. Yeah, so I think this, what I saw, I, I can't say for sure that what I saw really meant anything at all, but it was just, it was bizarre. And I've had some weird stuff happen that kind of falls in line with that. And I've talked about it on the show. But um, I think that when people see these things, and like you said, you saw that weird guy. Yeah. I mean, not reading into it. Well, yeah, I'm reading into it. Let's be honest. 
but let's read into it and let's just say that you know what if that weird guy was him what if that was the you know because that's my friend that's, was convinced that that was a freaking werewolf yeah that's exactly what i was saying and like and what was weird about it was it wasn't just so much it, it wasn't like driving by and just seeing a guy on the side of the road but it had a an ominous presence to it like it, it gave both of us the chills you know and before the fact that you could even start to compute like it's three in the morning we're out in the middle of the country there's nowhere to be walking to and or from and if you actually are walking you're going to be walking not just standing on the side of the road in the middle of nowhere staring in the middle of the night yeah, just yeah in the middle walk. of the night in the middle of yeah. nowhere just staring at the road you know because he it wasn't like he was like oh you know, like train. He was just like dead set, and we just walked, drove by. You know, like what the f and h is going on? It's like, weird, dude, right? Dude. Yeah, Joe. The same thing happened to me. It, w- it was me and 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 Nelly, Anthony, Bettina, Tony, and Maddie when when they came down to visit, and we were driving down fourteen thirty one, and I was taking them out to this area where, you know, we have a build or whatever. And I wanted to show, it's a very beautiful area. You know that drive, Joe, that that, oh, that yeah. 1431, that Jonestown, mm-hmm. real pretty. Mm-hmm. And right before we get into Jonestown, they're just like a woman, and I'm not joking, they were all, all these people were with me in the vehicle. And Bettina was like, what the hell? <laughs> this woman was holding like a green bag. And she was standing there and just like looking down like this, like not moving. And it was like 1.30 or 2.30 or in the morning. And we were like, what the hell? And everybody was like, what is that? And right there, there was like this, uh, like a, I think it's a water treatment or something. I'm not for sure. Oh, I know you're talking about. Yeah. I, I, yeah I know there's like a gated thing like there. And if you go back up in there, I think it's a treatment plant or something up in yeah. there. But she was standing there in front of that grate. There's like a grate. And she, she was just standing there just staring at it. And so we got freaked out. We thought maybe it was a ghost or something. Like maybe, I mean, who knows what it is. And so the girls were all like, hey, let's go back. What is that? Blah, blah, blah. So we turned around, we went back, and we saw her walking very slowly with her mouth open like like the grudge, <laughs> dude. I'm like, what is that? Like, it's just creepy. Yeah. And, you know, I wasn't going to stop and ask, hey, you want to ride or something? Because she looked unhinged or something. Her eyes looked, I don't know. She just, it, maybe she was on meth. I don't know. But it was like That's, two in the morning. I was the going to stay the out there. Out there it was either two options: is either a ghost or a tweaker. <laughs> One or the other. Now, if you go to Nameless Road, <laughs> you go to Nameless Road, you know that's a tweaker because years, yes, ago, years, years ago, I had a bad encounter with some people that were tweakers. I went out there, <clears throat> and years ago, I had a friend of mine who said, "Hey, man, this guy owes me money." And so I, I had no clue. I rode with this dude. I had no clue what was going on. And so we go out to Nameless Road. First time I had ever really – I had been out there once going between there and the San Gabriel, you know. And uh, some friends of mine had, had, had a had a friend that lived out there, and we went swimming in the, in the San Gabriel swollen that year. And so I was, I was like, oh, I've been out here once before. And so I was just kind of chilling. Kind of reminds me of that Dave Chappelle where him and Wayne Brady are like chilling and he's like, yeah, I'm to with you, Wolf. and I'm like, oh, you know, we got to stick together, man. We're homeboys, man. And he's like, yeah, man. And I'm not joking. This is this, it turned ugly real quick. He pulls his gun up and he's like, because I'm going to smoke this fool. I'm like, whoa, whoa, what? <laughs> no, nah, man, these fools owe me some money, man. They straight up woods, dude. I'm not playing. And I'm like, I'm like, oh, hey. I said, okay, well, you know what? Stop at the store. I'm gonna I'm gonna run in. He goes, he goes, he goes, now you're not trying to get away, are you? I'm like, try to get away. Get, for what? I'm trying, I'm not, let's do what we gotta do, man. And I'm over there like yeah. typing my, my brother. I'm like, dude, I'm I'm been kidnapped. This guy's taking me to a murder. I don't know what's gonna happen to me. I think this guy's crazy. He grabs my phone, he's like, What are you doing? And I'm like, I was talking, I was talking, he's texting my mom. I'm texting my mom. I was trying to like lie to this dude. Because he was like wired up, angry. He was like, What is this? I was, like, I was like, okay, look, I was texting my brother, man, because you seem like you're a little bit on edge. He goes, I'm fine. I'm fine. I've never been more fine. He starts, like, shaking the stairwell. wheel. And I'm like, dude, calm down, man. Like, who are these people, man? He goes, he goes, they're just some bikers, man. I ain't worried about it. I'm like, what? And I'm like, I'm sitting there going, like, you know, he goes, did you come heavy? You know what that means? And I'm like, maybe, like, yeah. what, what? What are we doing here? 
So we pull up to this trailer, and he's like, <laughs> all right, look. Okay, so I'm going to go around the front. You go around the back. And I'm like, what? Are they going to run out of this trailer? Like, what is going on here? Right? This is before I really uh, started embarking on my later career options, right? Whatever, you know, before I became seasoned, you know. And I'm all like, yeah, I don't think that's a good He's like, yeah, that's a good idea. You go around the back. And I'm like, I said, okay, but I don't like this idea, you know. So he goes up to the front door. He's all like, bang, 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 bang. And I'm like, dude, these people are probably going to start shooting. Right. All I knew of this area was that it was full of meth heads and people that made meth. And I'm going like, what am I supposed to do? So I go around. He goes, you got the back covered? And I'm like, I haven't even gone to the back yet. I'm on the side of the trailer going, yeah, yeah, I'm good. And I'm like, okay, now these people are going to start shooting. And if there's this is a meth lab or what, are we going to blow up? I don't know what's going to happen. <laughs> so I walk out the back and I see this guy run and jump. And then he takes off running straight. He's a skinny little quick. He's like looking back. He's all, you know, and he's like running real fast, straight, you know. And so I think, okay, I'm going to have to, you know, maybe chase this guy or something or pretend to because this guy that I thought was a normal guy, completely unhinged. And I think he's on something. And I'm all like, okay. Uh, and he goes, and he looks under the trailer. And he goes, go get him, man. Help me out here. That guy was me a lot of money. And I'm like, okay. So I start walking and I fall into what was literally man-made quicksand. I kid you not, man. These, yeah, these little tweakers out there, they got ingenious little things, <laughs> booby trap. And so I noticed it was like, like wood all the way down into the woods where he ran. And I'm sitting in waist-deep quicksand and my feet aren't touching the bottom. And I'm like, oh, man. I said, oh, my gosh, I can't get out. I'm trapped. So I started to panic. He comes around the back and he's all like, he's like, oh man, you let him get away. And I'm like, I'm like, look, dude, you know, I said, I am not here to do this. I'm not, you know, I said, can yeah. you pull me out? And he's like, yeah. And he's like, oh yeah, yeah. They got this place booby trap, man. And so he goes, yeah, this is a meth lab. And I'm like, what? In the <laughs> hell? So I am like floating in this, like it was getting higher too. And I'm just like, I'm sinking. Can you help? So he goes to his truck and he, he goes and he, he throws me a, like a tow chain and like, thank God, because this guy had like all kinds of crap in the back of his truck. And he like, he's over there, like taking his time, smoking his cigarette, attaching it to the front <laughs> of this, like the grill guard. And I'm like, dude, I was like, dude, I am about to die. Okay. This is like getting up higher. I said, I'm sinking, dude, please. And he's like, you'll be fine. And then next thing you know, he, I just get yanked out. And like my head almost hits the top of the of the bottom of this trailer. So I duck my head and I go through underneath the trailer and then I, I get yanked out and then drug and then thrown into the driveway. And I'm like covered in mud and whatever the hell else is sewage or whatever. I don't know what it was. Right. Goes, oh my God. I stand up and I'm like, oh my gosh, look at this. And he goes around this side and he gets a, a hose. He sprays me down. He's like, yeah, I'm going to smoke these dudes, man. When I get them, I'm going to catch them. I'm going to do this. And I'm like, I'm like, can you just take me back to civilization? <laughs> Get me off the nameless road. I don't want to be here. So the whole way back to Austin, he's all like, he stops and gets us like some food or something. And I'm just like sitting there like this. I'm like, I'm not eating this. I'm not hungry, man. And <laughs> right. I, I whoop his ass, but he had a gun, so I couldn't whoop his ass. I could whoop his ass if he had his gun. But he's like holding it while he's driving. He's smoking cigarette. And he goes, I know where they're at. I'm going to go catch them. And I said, you're going to take me home. And he's like holding his gun. He's like, he goes, I'm getting some really bad energy from you, Wolf. I'm like, you think? <laughs> I'm covered in poop and, you know, whatever. And he's like, and you, you smell bad. I'm like, no shit. No pun intended. I said, please. How about just drop me over there, give me a straw, I'll call my friends, they'll come get me. He's like, well, I thought you were tougher than that. I said, yeah, if this guy owed me a bunch of money, I'd be upset too. But I don't know how you do things. But this is, I'm not going to go to a meth lab and try to shoot. And I don't know what right. he's and I said, I'm I'm good. Can we just get get me off of this ride, please? And so he's all like, Yeah, man. So years later, like years later, I had was, you know, doing stuff back, you know, and people thought I was just, you know, whatever. And I see this guy, he comes walking down the street. He had been in prison for four years. Obviously, he was, you know, unhinged. I haven't seen him in a long, long time. They called him JJ. And JJ comes, man, Oh, what's up, my man? One, man. Was you working over here at the Roxy. And I'm like, Yeah, and I was I'm, I'm holding it down at the Roxy, man. He goes, he goes, yeah, remember that time we had to jack those fools over there and over there at Nameless Road? Yeah, and, they, and you fell in that quicksand? Yeah, man. And I'm like, yeah, yeah, I remember that. He goes, he goes, yeah, that was crazy, man. 
And then he starts to he proceeds to tell me how he caught the guy and pistol whipped him and beat him in a in a Bill Miller restaurant or something. And I'm all like, dude, I don't want to know about your crime, dude. Just, just, please, okay, you got it, you got him, good for you, yeah. He's like, yeah, man, I got him. And then you know, and then uh, yeah, I got caught with a gun. And then the cops, you know, they arrest me. And then they would they, they shouldn't have even been searching me, man. And then they found some dope. And I'm all like, wow, dude, wow. I said, man, man. So I'm gonna go back inside now, okay? Unbelievable. <laughs> the, the image of you being yanked out of a meth moat yeah, yeah. <laughs> under a trailer. <laughs> yes, that's a true story, man. I've told that story to a lot of people. That it's crazy because, like, that was like my introduction to how bad it was over there. Yeah, like, I had no, no idea. Soon, yeah, yeah. As soon as you said Nameless Road, I was like, "There's going to be a trailer or RV involved in this story." <laughs> <laughs> I know for a fact. <laughs> and, and some crazy white people with guns. That's yeah. what it was, you know. Yeah. And this guy was like, he was it just I don't remember like and bikers. And bikers, yeah. And I remember just that, that that Wayne Brady where he's just like, you know, is Wayne Brady, Wayne gonna, Brady gonna have choke choke this? <laughs> and he's like, run, run, run. He looks over and he's like, I felt like that. I was like thinking about that skit, like Dave Chappelle, like he was just like, Yeah, man. And the whole time this dude's just out of his mind, he goes and chokes yeah. the cop or whatever, you know. And you know, Dave Chappelle's just like, dude, what the hell's wrong with this guy? Because that's yeah. literally like he was a normal dude to me. I like I worked with him at one time. We worked, we did delivered pizza together. And the guy was like, he goes, You remember when you and Greg told me, my friend Greg Hill, and he's he's like, You remember you and Greg told me, you know, if y'all ever need anything, you know, if I ever needed help or whatever, you know, you got my back. I said, Yeah, man, I got your back, bro. I was like, What you need? I thought he needed to like move a piece of furniture or something. Right. I didn't know to go to a meth lab. <laughs> and then we're driving out there, and I'm like, I'm like, man, what is this? A long ways from Austin. Like, we're way out here, like in the middle of nowhere. I said, because back then, you know, Joe, back then, yeah, there was like nothing. all connected. I mean, there was yeah, countryside, you know. Nothing. And he's yeah. like, sure, it's pretty out here. And I'm like, yeah, it, yeah, it's pretty out here, Jay. I like it. It's nice, man. I think I've been out here once before. He was all like, yeah, man. Then he's like, I'm gonna smoke these fools. I'm like, well, hey, whoa. <laughs> it just turned really weird, really fast, really ugly. Yeah. And I was just like, hey, can we not do this? Is there is there a way we can call these people and talk to them or something? And he's like, no, right. nah, man, we have all that. No, it's going to be, you know, blood and bullets and guns. And I'm all like, all right, dude, all right. You know, and so yeah, let that drive without committing a felony. Yeah, it only took me like a, about maybe three weekends out there before I was like, yeah, I'm not going back. <laughs> like, <laughs> nah, I'm good. I'm good. But, but it's true. Like I was talking in the chat or uh, the other night or whatever the other day. And um, yeah, it used to be like you, you were talking about 183 used to be like the two lane road and then 1431 hit it. And there was like the McDonald's there and the liquor store. And then you could either go out to the lake, through, you know, Jonestown, or you can keep going north, you know, to, um, uh, what is it? Uh, it's a offshoot of, uh, Cedar park. Um, mm -hmm. starts with an L I can't think I of it. Right. Leander. Leander. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And, but now, man, I like, dude, cause my uncle lived out there and now, dude, I can't go out there and I'm like, Oh, there's the H E B. That's three HEBs from where that spot is now. You know what I'm saying? Like, like it's it's unrecognizable. It's 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 crazy. crazy. It is you, absolutely ridiculous. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sorry and about that, no folks. I wasn't trying to traumatize anybody. <laughs> it, was a, it was just a messed up story. And you know, you get a lot of weird stories out there. Um, there are people that used to live out there, you know, a lot of burnt out hippies. And one of them, he, he's this guy, Phil. He's, I've known him for years. I call him Philly Phil because he's from Philadelphia. And he's crazy, man. Like, he, he literally told me, he's like, yeah, man, I was out there, you know, I was always smoking out, you know, and there was just it was a really good vibe. He goes, and then the meth people came, man, and started doing the hard stuff, you know. And he goes, and I was really angry with them, you know, and then I started doing it with them, you know. And I'm like, well, what? He said that part. I was like, <laughs> then he goes, but then I got off of it, you know, and then I was angry again because, you know, I didn't like all that stuff, you know, and they were bringing a bad element around, you know, and he's like, and then, you know, I had to go out there and I'd have to shoot my gun in the air to get him to calm down my neighbors, you know, and they would get scared, run inside. And 
uh, he was telling me all this stuff. It was like me and Tony's stepdad and, and Anthony and Tony. He's telling us all this crazy stuff. And I'm like, okay, um, did you did you see a dog man? And he goes, oh, yeah, yeah, man. I saw a dog man. Yeah, for real. <laughs> so my friend had told me that this guy had seen one. And I said, because I've known this guy as an acquaintance, you know. And so I'm out there and I'm like, so – so he's like sitting on a porch swing. I'm like, do you want to you want to tell me about it? And he goes, Oh no, man, no, it's really traumatic. No, man. I'm like, what? <laughs> I said, look, dude, I drove out here to this godforsaken hell to, to get your story <laughs> because you don't have a phone. And so can you please tell me the story? And then he's like, Well, it's really traumatic. I don't know. I said, Okay, yeah, it's really traumatic. I get this. He says, but, you know, yeah, I could tell you, man. I guess I could tell you, man. And then he asked me if I had anything to smoke. And I said, no, I don't. Luckily, my one <laughs> nephew had a vape pen. I said, he, he's like, here, you can hit that. He's like, hit, okay, all right, cool, you know. Got anything else? No, we do not. Okay. Drink your hard right. lemonade, smoke the vape, and let's <laughs> tell the story. And he proceeds he to told tell me to me. ask Breezy to come. <laughs> <laughs> it was like the worst Dog man story ever. Waste my time. My, my friend thought it was all epic or something, you know, but I think when he told it to him, he was really high. Um, right. So when he tells it to me, it just becomes like, well, there was this wolf low crawling on the ground and it went under some barbed wire and it ran across the road real fast, unnaturally fast, you know, and I'm kind of sitting there waiting for the rest of the story, as Paul Harvey would say, and nothing happened. And I was like, did it stand up on its hind legs? He goes, oh, no, no, man. Wolves don't do that. So you said it was the werewolf. He goes, oh, it looked like one. Yeah. But I was high as shit. I was like, <laughs> <laughs> you know, so I called my friend and I was like, yeah, your buddy, your buddy just, you know, wasted uh, my damn time. I went out there and, and nothing happened. And he's like, well, they can't all be winners now, can they? I'm like, okay. <laughs> we'll drive out to Nameless Road and risk the, the meth families out there, you know, then I want to yeah. at least get a good dog man story. But that was like, that's funny because th that story was literally like a, like two, three weeks before I met my wife. And I remember thinking, this is the last time I'm going out the Nameless Road. And then one day I was driving around and I wanted to show her some beautiful countryside. So we ended up over there by Nameless Road. And I'll never forget, we were driving through there and she goes, it's so, <laughs> she goes, it's so pretty and calm and peaceful. <laughs> and I told her, I said, yeah, unless you're, being drugged underneath the meth lab. <laughs> yeah, really, you know, it's like it it's, uh, kind of changes things, you know? Right, right. Well, yeah, that's me. like... What's that's up, like me What's taking, on, take, That's like me taking my son out to St. John's. <laughs> Not so <crazy. laughs> no. No. I just like, got the memo, hey, man. Uh, in a nice area. <laughs> what up, Abe? How y'all doing? What's yeah, up, I just brother, seen man? it. I was I was doing a live. I didn't know you were gonna go live today, and I, I seen it, and I just popped on. So how y'all doing? Good, man. Just keep your Fridays open if you can. If not, I understand. Yeah, yeah I'll, I'll keep it open. Yeah, because last Friday I just needed to take a break, man. Yeah, I yeah. Being, you know, I was tired of being a satanic warlock reptilian. <laughs> um, it's it's tiring. They it's need tiring. vacations too. Yeah, well, I've, I've been a vampire, werewolf, warlock. Uh, Satanist reptilian. I'm 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 becoming more stuff as we speak. It just keeps getting bigger and bigger. Like this week, it was it was the reptilian. I had never been called the reptilian before until this week. That was that was that was a new one for me. That was a, that was a, definitely a change from the norm. Yeah, yeah the, there was troll to me and uh, saying all kinds of trying to threaten him about uh, gangs and all this stuff. But like, eh, I ain't worried about them, you know. They come up with all kinds of mess, dude. I mean, they're they're a mess. And that's all it is. We're not gonna even get into it. They 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 just they got nothing better to do. Um, you know, one of them thinks he knows the law now. I'm like, oh, now you're a lawyer, really? Because you can't even get rid of the roaches in your house, but you're a lawyer, right? He's yeah. deputy dog. <laughs> yeah. That old cartoon from back in the day, deputy dog. I don't know what happened to my the sheriff's hat. Remember, he was saying he was a cop. But when, what is it with these people always saying they're cops? And then later on, they're like, oh, I wasn't a cop. I was a security guard. Like, well, there's a big difference between being a security guard and a yeah. cop. Okay? Yeah. You're Paul Blart or you're Chuck Norris. Which are you? Some of the security, though, we have a few people that are pretty uh, serious about it. And they don't 
they don't go around acting like cops. They just do their job. They're former yeah. military and they act very professional. And then we got some, I got to be honest, they're just doing it because they're slackers. I would have yeah. fit into that category when I started out. I was like, you know what? I want a job where I can sit and not do shit. And I thought, right. here we go, security. And then I realized, like, you're not making any money just sitting there doing work, you know, whatever, unless you're working certain accounts. And so I thought, how do you make this this work? And so that's when I started. You know what? I don't want to be a slacker. I want to do something with myself. Um, but, yeah, there is no yeah. easy money. Everybody thinks it's easy, and it's not. No, nah, you're right, Wolf. Uh, like, uh, after the, whenever the the vid hit, like, uh, uh, the big company I was working for up in North Austin, um, they shut down. And my dude was like, hey, man, you want to come work at my smoke shop? And I'm like, yeah, sure, you know. And that's all it is. Like, you just sit there. It's basically like being a security guard, like, you know, th at a place that has no you know no uh, events taking place so it's like ah yeah i just get to sit here and watch youtube for nine hours and do nothing at all <laughs> doze off for a little bit and then like after about like four years of that now i'm like sitting there four and a half years now i'm sitting there i'm like dude i gotta do something <laughs> i gotta go so <laughs> i it's need like someone to talk hit to. whatever and it's like dude <laughs> Yeah, when I when yeah. I finally was like, you know, when I quit because I used to smoke, you know, in in years I haven't done it in years and years and years because I have high blood pressure and it actually does affect your blood pressure. Oh, yeah. People think it doesn't, but it does. Yeah, and it does. my friends were all like, "Yeah, hey, you quit smoking, man, that sucks." I'm like, "Yeah, it really sucks being able to remember where I put my car keys and knowing where <laughs> I park. Yeah, it really sucks. Like, yeah, it's horrible. I hate it, dude. I can do stuff now." Right, yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, I have motivation. Oh, horrible, horrible. <laughs> I have ambition and the will to feed it. You know? like, yeah. Uh, so what's been going on with you, Abe? What, what do you have, brother? What's going well, on with you? I've been having some things happening here around the house. Uh, when that uh, clips happened that night, there was two severe thunderstorms that came through and we got flooded. Yeah, yeah. So... We, 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 all the, all the water came in through the doors. So I was like a, like an open cloud burst and it flooded our backyard and we're throwing towels or blankets on the ground, sponged it up. Then like an hour later or two hours later, another one came through. Had to do the same thing. We had to get some people to come and place the machines to keep the mildew out. <clears throat> uh, some gutter people are going to come do a uh, place gutter so that won't happen again. But after that, uh, man, it's been three days ago. Strange things were occurring around the house. For example, uh, you could hear doors opening and closing, wiggling on the doorknobs, banging on the windows, banging on the walls. And then uh, the lechuzas started coming and you could hear all the commotion outside. So it's like I was debating whether to go out or not and, and you know, face whatever was out there. So uh, I said to myself uh, last night, I said, if it happens, I'm going to go out there. But it didn't happen again. It happened three days. <clears throat> I had gone to a quinceanera and some things happened there in which uh, somebody had said basically the sisterhood. And I know they're the, the person that introduced me as their sister, that wasn't talking about biblically, uh, more of more of a wish-like thing. So I already knew that some things was going to happen because of what happened that day, and it happened for three days straight. I just wish that I could record those incidents, what was happening outside my house. <clears throat> there was so many different kinds of uh, sounds of birds. I mean, it was echoing through through the through what my neighborhood. And of course, all this paranormal stuff happening, uh, shadow figures. Uh, so, you know, I just waited and I said, well, if it, ha if it happens again, I'll just go out. But it didn't happen no more. I prayed against it, you know, and I said, it, you know, because I get up tired of fighting spiritually against people that are, are gullible like that because they're really worshiping things that have fallen, which were greater than that. You know, we're, 
we're children of God. And, uh, you know, it's like, I don't wish nothing bad upon nobody. I just don't accept their negativity, whatever they're trying to bestow upon me. Mm-hmm. And I, I, I get tired seeing people uh, getting sick by their own demise. You know, if, if they wish bad towards me, I'm accepting it goes back to them. Is it they think that they they have that they have witch government increments because of the things that happen around them, but if they only knew that they're being deceived by the unseen, that they're the unseen is making things happen so they can think they have some kind of power. Because if they have some kind of power, they would have been getting they wouldn't be getting sick. They wouldn't be yeah. getting cancer or anything like that, you know. But yeah, that's what I've been going through, man. Uh I made some videos about it. Uh, it's been pretty hectic, you know, and plus I see what's, what's been happening to you, you know, just kind of like me. I guess some of those people, they're affiliated with uh, DW mm-hmm. because uh, they, they send me messages like videos of them and, uh, and you know, I don't want to do nothing with them. So I blocked them now from my list. They've been trying to get a hold of me through through the system that I play uh, games with yeah, just to get my IP address. And I, I'm not doing that, you know. Well, one of them, I know that he came after you and me and Shade Viking. And, you know, Shade was going pretty hard in the paint on uh, Roach Boy. So <laughs> so I know he, that, that particular person came after us with a fake account and tried to troll people. And a bunch of people just, like, turned him in. And then he got his stuff taken down. So we all know who they are. It's the same people over and over again because they don't produce anything. They don't do anything in this community but but raise hell and cause problems. Yeah. They're, really, they're just here uh, to troll everybody. Really, it's what they are. Yeah, I'm just I'm recuperating still from what I have, man. It's been over a, a month now, you know, and I still haven't completely recuperated, you know. And then I see some of those trolls trying to jump on my. You know, I, I did make a video about the certain energy about it that never wanted peace, you know. So yeah, I, I said what I said, you know, but. Yeah, I mean, you know, I'm sorry what y'all going through, man. I, I'm kind of glad that I don't have the platform that y'all have, man, because it's uh, been hard. It's been hard. Nelly has been. If people out there listening, if you could just really pray, please pray for my wife. Pray for Anthony. Oh yes, Maddie, I mean, and they've been they've been messing with Bettina too. She called me a couple of days ago. I didn't get the chance to talk to her a lot about it. Yeah, but they're it, just, it, those kind of individuals right there. The only way they're going to learn their, their lesson. If you teach them a lesson, but you know, nowadays it reminds me of, of the movie of Hulk Hogan where the biker that said he's gonna beat up the biker and then the biker said he's gonna sue him. You know? Yeah. So you, you can't you can't teach somebody a lesson no more nowadays that they'll try to put you in, in jail for for assault or something in that nature, you know. Well, it's it's gonna be done because three of them are getting uh cease and desist, and one of them had the audacity to tell me that he was gonna do uh said something about he was gonna sue me if I sent him one and I'm like please do please do because I'm begging you to do that because the mountain of evidence is gonna just be an avalanche on their heads. I mean they have been they've gone to every single buddy I know I mean you know and said stupid things you know and it's like and I, just to be polite and not say too much about it I just said you are not smart okay Let's just put it that way, and I'm going to leave it at that. You're not smart. Stop trying to match wits with people because you're not smart, period. I mean, you just don't do the things you did. And you pretty much all, pretty much everybody in this community. And it's crazy uh, of the people that do follow them, you know, the people that I would think that would have a brain to to understand what they're trying to do, you know, that they they support the works that they're doing. So Mm -hmm. they're kind of like the same way, you know. Uh, the part of their, their, their little yeah. click, you know? Yeah, and you just got to – we're just going to have to – I can't really say much right about them right now. I just got to yeah. be – like let it ride until we yeah. see what happens, you know? Um, Monica, I have a question for you. Yeah. Now, you live up there in Texoma, and I, 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 was, I was under the impression that you lived on the border of Texas and Oklahoma. Like, Well, I live very close to it. It's maybe – 10 miles up the road. I live in Sherman, right? So it's Sherman. Sherman. Okay, that's what I thought, Sherman. Yeah. But that Texoma area, let me ask you a question about that. Do do you get a lot of reports from that? Because I've heard a lot of weird stuff out of that area. I was going to say the same. Yeah, I mean, it's starting to ramp up with, like, um, not me personally, but I'm hearing reports around. Um, 
there's always been, you know, Sasquatch reports from just right, right, right. River, tons of them and really aggressive ones too, in some areas. Oh yeah. Yep. And I uh, want to be out there at night. <laughs> yeah. And I've heard a couple of like dog man stories, but I'd recently heard like pale crawler stories coming through too. Ooh. And I just, I really don't know what to make of pale crawlers personally, because that's kind of new to me. It's weird. Yeah. Yeah. You know, pale and crawlers are white from the face. Yeah, they're the white bodies. Oh, shoot, white bodies. Yeah. And they're just, I mean, humanoid looking, just kind of, usually they're crawling around. The, the, the stories I'm hearing, they're, you know, crossing the road in front of something. Yeah. They'll like, crawl up a tree like and a, do, uh, twist their bodies all kinds of weird ways. And, yeah. yeah. Like, think of like a gray alien, but whiter than that. And mm, just yeah. crawling with a, with all the time. looking teeth, typically. Yeah. Yeah. yeah so, I mean, the, I mean, <laughs> the Bigfoot stories have gone on uh, for years, but like I said, we're starting to get you know more dogman stories, or at least I'm hearing them. I wish I could get some kind of evidence, or like on recording, you know, record what they're what they're spotting and stuff like that. You know, oh yeah, it's like I mean, now, but awesome. everybody's got a cell phone nowadays, so it wouldn't be that hard to record. What's but hard though is like you to say that, that when something like that pops out in front of you, your first thought isn't to grab your phone and record necessarily. Yeah. Right. Well, I know nowadays you see people fighting and people fighting. They're not trying to break <laughs> the fight. They're just trying like, to this record. person's getting stabbed to death. Let me let me record this <laughs> posterity. We don't think that helping nobody, and we ain't doing that. We, everybody's got the cell phones recording it, you know, and the fights happening, you know. <laughs> I mean, yeah, I've got a dash yeah. camera, so everything that's in front of me is recorded as I'm going down the road. But so so what? here's here's what I was going to tell you, Monica. Why don't you do this? Uh, come back next Friday and bring us some stories from Texoma. Sure. Okay, yeah. And yeah, you you take over, and, and, and now if you have to go out to the lake and go to the Dogman Island or whatever, do what you got to do. Or take one for the team. Don't <laughs> be selfish. Me and Abe and Joe will root will root for you from a remote location, our houses, and we'll be like, "Go, Monica! <laughs> we believe in you. Go. We believe in you. you got believe this. in yourself. You can do it. You can do it, Monica." <laughs> but so, like, yeah, but, like, oh, she's gonna stop right there in the woods. Oh, whatever. I gotta find a yeah, but, right there by the road. I don't know. I mean, some of the areas near me, I might fall into a meth moat on my way out there. <laughs> if you've ever been to Cartwright, there, it's, a, it's a distinct possibility. Yeah, I've been through there. I bet. Yeah, I bet. and on the other side of the lake, too, it looks kind of yeah. rough. There's some shacks, and they're like, people live in that? Oh, yeah. They're like, no, we're just cooking up meth. We're just we're just hanging out. We're not really. Nah, it's just Jason yeah. Voorhees. It's cool. Nah. <laughs> so, you know, no, but... <laughs> on, on what I was thinking when when A was talking about that on the picture thing, because like because y'all have seen all this um, um, stuff where like if you have your iPhone or your smartphone and you put it like in front of a spider and the spider will like stop and chill and it won't do anything. And then as soon as you remove because of the infrared, mm -hmm. you know what I'm talking about? Y'all know what I'm talking about? Mm -hmm. So if you actually kind of just a thought off the top of my nugget if uh you incorporate that spider dna you know to these these types of things it, and that's the reason why they don't mess with game cams and and you never see them on really any cameras hardcore and all the old footage is tape and real footage as before yeah. they had infrared you know so it you know, might I be one of those that. things. Yeah. And I've thought that for a while because, you know, we used to do investigations up in what we called Area X. I'm sure everybody's heard of it at some point. So that's really remote. There were there were cabins up there, right? For the homestead cabins. Been there for generations with this one family. Well, at one point we had cameras like all around the perimeter of this cabin and they're blasting infrared out because you turn on your night vision and it is, you know, you don't see anything in the dark, but if I'm looking through a night vision lens, it is lit up like a city. Right. So I, what's, what's walking in front of that? I mean, you know, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I agree with you. I think that that's, you know, so yeah, if, if they're working on a different frequency and a different spectrum, as far as, visualization goes as far as what we consider audio and visualization yeah. you know, in our spectrum 
-hmm. they could be right on the edge of the frequency of that. And you can be like, no, I I know what I'm looking at and I'm seeing it, but it's not like same thing when you get like a beautiful sunset and and you're like, oh, I want to take a picture of this beautiful sunset. And it looks like crap on your phone, (laughs) but it looks beautiful in your eyes. You know what I mean? Yeah. And you're like, look at this. And they're like, ah, that looks like crap. (laughs) I have that kind of phone. Yes. Is, you just described my phone to a T. My phone takes everything beautiful and turns it into absolute dog crap. <laughs> exactly. I'm actually There's, much better looking than my pictures are. I'm just telling you that. And this camera I'm bad. Not, I'm, you look, every, all these cameras make me look bad. In real life, I'm, I'm bored. If, if I'm actually like, I got bigger muscles, look, trust me. I look all right. I tell everybody I look better in person. you got to see me. <laughs> Mon- Monica, Joe, and Abe have met me in person. They know how sexy I am in person. Let's just tell you that. I'm just going to throw it out there. They can attest to it. Yes. I'm the on opposite. Camera. They're like, hey, he looks pretty cool on camera. And then they see me in real life, and they're like, yeah. <laughs> no, no. My God. We've been catfished. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> no, you guys like, all look like, to me, I mean, everybody represent, like, I mean, obviously Monica is of the fairer sex, and she's very, very pretty, but I think Abe is a handsome guy. I think, Joe, you're a handsome guy. I mean, you guys, you guys got beautiful wives. I mean, you know. They wouldn't marry you if you were ugly, guys. I mean, yeah, I mean, you know, well, that, that, what safer personality? Yeah. Better the money. <laughs> <laughs> it's the money. But for, for me, my wife, like, I, she didn't even, uh, she thought I was really poor. Like, I just did not show her anything. Like, the first week she was here hanging out, I made it a point to just go eat at really cheap places and just not spend money, you know? And, like, that was it. I was just like, I want to see what this woman thinks of me right you know and then she when she tried to escape then i said okay okay look all right all right look. <laughs> look, 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 look nice all right i got pockets i got pockets <laughs> <laughs> we can go to sizzler all right good fine it's one of them high class well, people texas laying the cattle it is <laughs> <laughs> yeah. call of duty ain't working fine <laughs> fine I bought them nuggets for you like two days in a row. You gonna act like that? I, I, I was the opposite. She's she's like, oh, he's got a gold grill, nice. And I'm like, yeah, but I live in a trailer house with a sledge. <laughs> Part of it doesn't have a roof. I don't go to that. Yeah, yeah. That's what the is at. Be careful for yeah. that. I'm just saying. You know. All right, guys, yeah. we're gonna hit. We're gonna hit it, man. Tomorrow, though, I mean, uh, next uh, Friday, y'all be back, and we'll. I'll be back next Friday. Stuff we could talk about. Uh, I like the vibe with us. I think this works. I like, you know, Abe and, and Monica and Joe. I think it's it works. You know, we. Oh, around what time know. frame, uh, brother Josh? Next it's Friday, eight thirty, nine o'clock. We get okay. back and do it again. You know, I mean, we always fill the chat up. You know, like I was saying earlier that I got a nasty email from somebody who told me that. Me going live at two in the morning was a flex on the community because I had almost 400 people in the chat at four in the morning. And they're like, you're over here keeping people up at night just so you can prove a point to the community. And I'm like, I was bored. The <laughs> night was mad. I just wanted to do a live, man. This guy read into this whole this whole scenario. He read into it. I'm like, man, these people. There's just people them, awake at night. I, I, I stay awake at night. Night owls are out. I do yeah. videos at night and they pop up. Then the night owls. Yeah. Yeah. I do. I, 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 I honestly usually... think if I if I were to give everybody in this country a gold bar, they'd be like, why is it only an ounce? You know, they would have some sort of reason to be <laughs> yeah, upset yeah. about it. I'm like, dude, I mean, it's it's unbelievable how people complain about everything. So One negative. guy, yeah. So My ball and it's just just nonstop with the complaining, but to me, it's funny. I just laugh about it. Some people get mad. You know, eh, it's stupid. Well, no, it, you know, it, yeah, it is. It is because it's like people forget the old saying: like, never look the gift horse in the mouth. They don't yeah. have to be around for it. You know what I'm saying? They don't have mm-hmm. to share their knowledge with you or, or come kick it with you. But they do out of you know the love that they have for the product that they're they're trying to present to you and the knowledge that they're trying to present to you so you know it, it you're just ignorant if, if you really think, you're just ignorant, you're just ignorant. You're just ignorant. You're ignorant. 
That's what it is, man. They're just ignorant, dude. I just like I don't yeah. get it, man. Like I would never. First of all, I would never waste my time even emailing another podcast because I'm not. I just don't do that. I'm not gonna ever do that. I'll be like, yeah, I'm gonna text this. Pr- He's really gonna hate this comment. Like, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah no. Nah. Even gonna read it. It's gonna be one of seven other people that are gonna look at it and go, well, he's never gonna see that. Right. Yeah. You're not even nah. gonna fuck me, dude. I'm. I barely like. And then if 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 I go onto the comment section, I will sometimes say stuff because then I'm actually having fun. And then my people tell me like, "Don't do that. Don't respond." I'm like, "Well, I just want to say something." They're like, "Don't even bother," because I like to talk crap too. But you know, it's like yeah. it gets to the point where these people they really think that you're like the, 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 they're such a big part of your life. And I'm here to tell you, really and truly, you're wasting your time. You're yeah, just going to be true. made fun of. I mean, you know, it's it's, right. it's, it's, it's true. You see, you, you capture a different audience around that late at night because they're from other the other side of the world, you know. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So you you you're capturing an audience somewhere else. This how I used to do my my uh, my podcast or you know my um, my groups was during the day, and then some at late at night to catch the the people that I know from across the world that will pop uh, throw on the the groups like uh, uh, from the Lightworker Life feeds. That they're on my, on my, they're still there, you know. It's just, you know, they when it's sleeping time here is daytime over there. You know, so, but that's you know, good. One thing, one thing I notice about about what you're saying, Abe, it, it, that I know that's true because I saw a different audience at, at late at night than I did during the day. And then people will go and you'll, you'll get thousands of views on the show later on. People will watch it, but with my books, like you know, on Amazon, when you get paid every month for your books. Like it shows there's something that I actually Ken was in the live earlier, but like me and Ken were talking about it. He goes like, you'll see it like him and David were telling me, you know, when you get paid, you'll see all the different people that bought your book from Amazon from different parts of the world. Oh, cool. <clears throat> and I was shocked. Like the, the second month my books were out, I had like seven different countries where I got paid by seven different countries. Hmm. Nice. And there was a lot of people from Europe. Like I, I sold probably not a lot, but I mean, like you know, a couple dozen books from like Germany, and then like I sold, I think three or four dozen from Britain. Um, you know, in that first second month, whatever, I was selling quite a bit per month. You know, on average, and then Australia, um, that was another one. And I even had one from uh, Japan. I had somebody from Japan and somebody from South Korea. So I thought that was pretty cool. Yeah, that is. So somebody out there likes me, I guess, you know, I mean, I'm not, you know, obviously I'm not everybody's uh, enemy number one or whatever, but uh, yeah, folks, thank you for tuning in. I guess Joe, Joe got abducted. Joe, I hope you're there. I hope you're okay. Um, <laughs> there he there is. He is. <laughs> yeah, all right. I don't want to say goodbye without Joe coming back. So tomorrow night we're going to have a show. It's going to be about the UAP stuff, uh, unidentified alien presence we're going to talk about some different things, and I'm not sh- real sure. I think Max Hawthorne is going to come on with me. I got to double check. I got to see Max had – he was a paleo uh, – what do you call it? Uh, fiction, uh, yeah, no, paleo fiction writer. Oh, okay. And he had some weird uh, uh, alien stuff happen to him. And he oh. was on my show before, and when he when all he did was to really talk about that, the – the cryptid stuff, you know, the marine cryptids, which are creepy and scary and of their own right. But now he's going to talk about something else. If he comes on tomorrow night, I don't know if he is, if I, if I, he was supposed to come on last week, but if things got kind of messed up, but regardless, we'll have a show and we'll see who comes on and I'll throw the link out there to the people that usually come on, but we'll see what happens. We'll be on tomorrow night. Then Sunday night, it's me, Anthony and Tony. We chop it up and we retell people's encounters and we have, where's the paper at? We have them all written down over here. Like yeah, one of my one of my scariest is the bloop. That thing horrifies me, dude. What is it? I don't know. The bloop. Have you ever heard of the bloop? Uh, it's a marine. It's a marine crypto, and yeah, it, it made a noise like uh, off of the off of the lower edge of South America, and it echoed all the way through to almost Canada. Mm-hmm. But it's supposed to be like, check it out, like. Google it, look it up. Yeah. The bloop, yeah, it, it it's freaky. I, I, oh, I, have, I know what yeah. you're talking about. Yes, yeah, yes, I, I have exactly I have what meg- you're talking about. Yeah, I have megalophilia, so like anything that's big, like 
when I was a kid, I used to be able to go to San Antonio. A and, lot of people have and that. chill and yeah, not now I can't like look at the the hemisphere tower. Like I'm like, no, like, <laughs> <laughs> like it's just too much for me. But the blue, like when I saw that, I was like, oh my. <laughs> Stay away from me, Satan, <laughs> dude. You know whatever it was that ate that that nine ten foot great white, you know, mm, down yeah. way down deep in the water. That and they know that it wasn't an orca because the orcas don't go that far. They don't go right. because they won't be able to breathe when they come back up. They won't have enough. Yeah, it was yeah, a megalodon. Yeah, yeah, something ate it. I mean, it was a that's crazy. Something think, big yeah. enough to eat a ten foot great white. But no, those things could swallow like uh, three blue whales whole. Cool. Like that's how big the bloop is. Yeah, they, it's like, yeah, you see like you see like the mouth of it and like a human's like that big, <laughs> and it's like that's just the mouth. <laughs> like, yeah. Yeah, there was a, I'm there was a creature called uh, Dunkel. Uh, Dunk, uh, oh God! I, I talked about it with Scott, the late Scott Martis, the paleontologist. Um, Dunkeloptica. Dump. Uh, it, anyway, they they have the skeletons of these things, and it's like a hundred million years. It was. It's like from way, way back, so far back before sharks became the predominant species, the predatory right. species. Dunkeloptica's or Dumpel. I can't say say the name of it. But the skeleton, the man, all it is is like an armor bony shell, and the, the the mouth was just a razor sharp straight edge, and then they had teeth on the on the sides like fangs, and it just everything it bit into, um, basically it just bit it in half. It just Whoa. that's how it ate. It was crazy. Yeah. You, you got to look it up. It's a crazy thing. Yeah. I'll check it no, out. But yeah, no. scary, man. <laughs> That's why I stopped going to South Padre. After I saw that blue ball, I was like, nope, I'm good. <laughs> no more South Padre for me, man. Yeah, or, or Port Aransas, because Port Aransas, they always manage to catch, like, every year, there's like, we've caught the biggest tiger shark in the ocean. Like, every year, it's like a bigger oh, one, and now they're like 16 foot or something. And I'm like, or again? Some, I'm, yeah, or some yeah. weird flesh eating disease. They're like, yeah. wow, and Port Aransas, <laughs> flesh eating bacteria. <laughs> The poor, oh, oh no, the, the jellyfish. Yeah. Every year they're always stinging people, and you know, and they're you know whatever. Something always happens. Their eyes and nipples fall off or something because they get stung. <laughs> you know, it's like it's horrible. You know, it's like just whatever. But all yeah. right, folks, there it is. Somebody said it. Dun Dunkley Dunkley Dunkle Dunkle Ostis. Whatever. I don't know how Dunkin' Donuts. Whatever. Anyway, <laughs> no, things that down on you and it kills you. Let's put it that way. Yeah. That horrible. I mean, you become unalive. <laughs> that horrible twelve dollar coffee came down. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys. I'll see you then on the on the next uh, next show next Friday. Yep. Yep, so later, uh, God bless. All right. Bye. Bye, Monica. I'll see you. All right. Bye. So, folks, that was it for tonight. That's the show. You know, we're gonna we're gonna run. Uh, thank you for tuning in. We appreciate your time and patience with me and 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 showing up and and just please like and subscribe if you haven't. I think you're already subscribed if you're in the chat. But if you haven't subscribed, go ahead and subscribe and please like. And I know that you fools that are lurking around waiting for me to say your name. I'm not gonna say it. It's not gonna happen. We're just gonna have fun on this show. We're gonna do what we do. All right. So eat your heart out. And we're going to do it again tomorrow. We're going to do it again Sunday. And everything's going to be great. All right. Good night. And we love you. I mean, we really do love you. I'm not joking.